Hello and welcome to day six of the English Schools FA National Football Finals brought to you live here on ESFA TV from the home of Stoke City Football Club. And up first today we have the under 18s Women's Super League Final as Sandwell College face off with St. Joseph's College. Well, it's the first of two games being played here today then. Let's have a look at how the two teams line up, starting here with Sandwell. So they have in goal Ellie May Locke, and then the rest of their starting eleven is made up of Ellie McFarlane, Abby Borton, Abby Lloyden, who is the captain today, Freya Smith, Olivia Owen, Ramea Farquhason, Tuana Costa Demba, Amelia Lightfoot, Izzy Wittick, and Kira Newell, the Sandwell manager is Ryan Hamilton. As for St. Joseph's College then, this is their starting 11. Daisy May Gibbs, I beg your pardon, is in goal. And the rest of the starting lineup there, as you can see, Lauren Butcher, Megan Waring, Leah Mitchell, Lexi Pryke, Zavia Seach, Tate Schiefer, Emily Bates, who captains the side, Zinnia Delglin, Lauren Hales, and Paige Gardner charge is Paige Shorten. Here are the two sets of substitute options then available to both managers. You can see the Sanwell substitutes there on the left. Melissa Pritchard, Neve Ellison who is the substitute goalkeeper, Ashleen Joseph Francis, Rhiannon Armstrong and Erin May Fox and as for St. Joseph's their substitutes Emily Clark, Natalie Mashon Gay, Yika. Sarah Brasero, Lila James and Kelsey Morgan. Well, here come the teams then. It's St. Joseph's on the left in the red and white and Sandwell in the blue and white on the right. Led out onto the field here by the match officials, the referee, Mr. Joshua Smith, his assistant, Ian McGuinness and Max Underwood. And the fourth official here today is Dean Whitestone. Well, looking forward to both the games today then. It's the under-18 women's Super League final to get us kick-started. Both of these teams have had to play five games en route to, to the final here this morning. And well, for Sandwell, it wasn't all plain sailing. They finished second in Group C of the Midlands West division but then beat Hartbury College who actually won that same group in the quarter final for St Joseph's and they have won every single game en route to today's big occasion and what a big occasion it is as well such a great venue here at Stoke City Football Club sure both sets of players really looking forward to to playing getting on the ball out there and hopefully just enjoying their football let's see which one of the two teams can settle down quicker and who can make the fastest start as we close in now on kickoff both sides won 2-1 in their semi-final wins to reach this stage both slender narrow margin victories there has to be a winner here today 90 minute match of course and then no time for extra time I'm afraid so it will go straight to penalties the dreaded spot kicks should the score still be level come full time referee there in the centre circle is just going to bring the two captains together for the pre-match coin toss and handshakes Sandwell College there in the West Bromwich Albion kit, the partnership that they have with the Championship Club. Plenty of players as well throughout the Sandwell College side who actually are attached to West Bromwich Albion, their women's academy side. Eight players, in fact, in the starting 11 who also played together at West Brock. It's 
It's of course a tactical battle out there as well between the two sets of coaches in the technical areas down below the dugouts. Ryan Hamilton and Sophie Chatwin, his assistant, are in charge of Sandwell. For St. Joseph's, they are led by Paige Shorten and assistant coaches Cole Skews and Louis Henman Mason. Both sides, I'm sure, having been given their final talkings to pre match before this big final begins. Two captains there then. On the left is Emily Bates, the number eight for St. Joseph's. And Abby Lloyden is the skipper for Sandwell. Referee there just puts the yellow card back in his pocket and, well, hopefully it'll stay there. Hopefully there won't be any need for it. But on an occasion like this, well, perhaps wouldn't be surprised if the match official was to have to get the notebook out. We are ready to get this one underway then. And it's Sanwell College here who will get the ball moving at the start of the first 45. As they here kick from right to left as we look at things from the main camera position in this first half. Swept all the way back there to the goalkeeper, Ellie May Lock. She is one of those attached to West Brom's academy. Long ball forward there, trying to find the runner in behind, but it's all the way back through to the opposite goalkeeper. And Gibbs there on hand to come out and collect. I mentioned prior to kickoff, settling fast, and that is such an important factor, I'm sure, for both of these two teams that they do just get a foothold in the game early on and try to start the game how they want it played, played at their tempo and their intensity. It's an early free kick here for St. Joseph's after that clip of the heels. It's taken there by Lexi Pryke. Playing in the right centre-back role by the looks of things this morning for St. Joseph's. There's that one there. Goes forward up over the halfway line. Mitchell, that's it forward away from the first pressure there. Leah Mitchell did superbly well. Back here to Mitchell again, just held up though on the edge of the penalty area and the referee felt that it was enough in that one to award the free kick. Maybe just a bit over eager to get the ball back there, Mitchell having lost out initially, but it was certainly a great play to begin with to burst away from the first defender. A short goal kick there taken as Sandwell tried to build forward from the back. Lightfoot here is after this one on the near side and has got there as well. Mastic there coming back off Amelia Lightfoot too. So it will be St. Joseph's throwing. Butcher there, the right back across, just to retrieve the ball, and presumably she will take this one forwards. St. Joseph's College have scored ten more goals than Sandwell in the five games that have led up to this final today. They've also conceded two left as well, but both sides with an impressive defensive record. St. Joseph's have actually only conceded four goals in the five games, which is really good going. Plenty of the games leading up to this occasion as well have been extremely high scoring. So, well, you might expect goals here today, but then there's always the potential, of course, for two teams of a quality like this to maybe cancel each other out. Let's hope that's not the case. First three minutes played. It's been a, a relatively even and slow start it's a long throw in here being lined up though by Olivia Owen just drying the ball I think before trying to deliver this one into the mixer Owen eventually does send it long into the penalty box it's more up than away really bouncing around the six yard box it's eventually cleared there though for St. Joseph's it was kept in play to begin with there by Lauren Hales but she's only given the ball back
really good header there from Megan Waring at the back for St. Joseph's, who just came through and made sure that that aerial duel was going to be won how it was. Mitchell taking charge in the midfield again for St. Joseph's. And the longer forward ball down the St. Joseph's left flank and just came off the head there of Abby Burton. Goes out for the throw. It's actually St. Joseph's first of three cup finals which they have to play in the coming three weeks. So it's a really packed schedule, but well, what confidence that would build for them if they were to win this one here today, moving forward. And they're coming forward there, but it's going to be swept away, is it, for Sanwell? Not particularly. Danger still looming, but Sanwell with bodies back now. Such an exciting time of the season. Finals time. It might be an exciting moment here for Sanwell coming forwards, but St. Joseph's managed to get bodies back and deal with any potential threat. Well defended. from what we've seen this year as was the case last season as well the English schools finals here at Stoke City have been such a success it's really great to see so many young talents taking to the field out here long throw and again there was taken by Olivia Owen but didn't reach the intended target that time here's Lightfoot trying to turn and make something of it but she couldn't and it's out once more for another throw in Owen has taken that one relatively quickly out again though here it's a short throw in that time as she tried to find the nearest teammate but that was well anticipated up then to the striker in Hales but she wasn't able to bring the ball under the spell that time still fighting for it Hales but Sanwell maintained possession comfortably back to the goalkeeper a bit of a heavy touch there and it just allowed for the pressure to be applied by Gardner but Sanwell get away with that one definitely trying to control the game though here Sanwell as they try to just build a bit of possession albeit inside their own half of the field but just try to get their foot on the ball move the opposition around if nothing else Neatly threaded pass there, it was slipped through the first line of defence. Sunwell continued to try to break through the lines, but it's a miscued ball across to Olivia Owen. It was too far behind her. This time it will be a throw in for the side in red and white. Red and white, the colours of Stoke City, of course, our host today. Stoke City having now finished their EFL Championship season. Some loose touch as it tried to be sent back to Butcher, but it is out now for the throw in again, and Butcher has the ball in her hands. No chances as of yet. It's been cagey opening eight minutes. Lexi Pryke there just going to retrieve the ball. Butch just throwing and managed to find a teammate as well who just found a little bit of space there. Did Lauren Hales as she came short to receive from that throw in. Some of the Young supporters in the house on the stand to the near side. It's a foul. It's 
going to be an opportunity then here for St. Joseph's to potentially load the penalty area. And let's see what they've got by way of a delivery into the mixer. Seems as though it's going to be a two-player wall here for Sernwell. That wall made up of Romeo Farquhar-Husen and also Ernie McFarlane there to the goalkeeper's left. <laughs> Delaglin there with the ball into the box and ricochets through to the goalkeeper. It's the first effort on goal that either side have been able to th fathom and well, it wasn't really testing the shot stopper but the first little sight uh, off the goal at either end. Good ball in, wasn't it, from Dalglin and was testing of the defence, certainly. St. Joseph's will be asking for more of that, more attacking intent. Light foot there with the touch, but that's only back here with St. Joseph's, but only momentarily. Good strong challenge there, centre field, just slipped. But back to her feet now, over on the left flank here for St. Joseph's, forward to Delglin. Taking charge now is Gardiner, the long-range strike, and it just stings the palms of the goalkeeper, Lauren Hales it was, who unleashed for goal. Certainly struck the sweet spot on it, but didn't quite get the intended direction, and it was pretty much straight down the throat of the goalkeeper in the end. It's a nerve settler, though, for the Sandwell goalkeeper lock. St. Joseph's just in the last couple of minutes, beginning to take the game in their stride, but... Well, Sanwell there, have the free kick on the halfway line. Nothing much to do yet for the referee in the first stages here. Still very early stages, of course. In answer to the question that I posed, though, as to which team was going to settle down the faster. Well, there's not really been an answer, it's been fairly even. So it shows if maybe in the last couple of minutes we'll feel that they've just edged things, but it's nothing more than that. Coming together there, the referee looked there to try to play the advantage to begin with, I think. Good officiating, really, as he tried to see if the opportunity was there for Delglin to continue, but it wasn't. Brought it back for the original foul. It's taken short again, no intent that time for St. Joseph to get the ball forward direct as they try to build through the lines and play good football. Wasn't a good touch there, though, as it was meant back for Delglin, but never came her way. Similar styles, I think, we're seeing from the two teams. That's great composure from the goalkeeper. Wasn't bothered at all about the Lauren Hales pressure and was happy to just take the touch away from her. Bouncing ball there for Sanwell to get after inside the penalty area, but nothing comes of it. He goes all the way out and behind, and we'll restart here then with the goal kick. lose touch there which might be problematic but Mitchell did well to recover the situation to begin with and Butcher was involved in the aftermath Sanwell here have it back though Lightfoot had it momentarily but no longer St Joseph's once again managed to deal with the danger and that's been the case so far really and Sanwell haven't been able to Really pose a question of the St. Joseph's back line. Oh, 
Lock there trying to play that one out first time when perhaps she had more time than she realised. And well, in the end, it's an unforced error which sees the overturn of possession. Throwing taken there into the feet of Hales, and it's just a set back, but Ben Sanwell managed to get the ball back. Evaded the first challenge there. It was a coming together, but nothing more. And it won't be kept in play. Despite the best efforts there of Izzy Wittick. That was the coming together and, well, it was the St. Joseph's player in the end who actually ended up down, but I think it was the challenge from the St. Joseph's player to begin with. Anyhow, Waring there on the turn. I'm happy to do so, happy once more to go back to Daisy Mae Gibbs. Trying to feed that one up to Hales. Hales then had it. Back to Del Glynn. Del Glynn then trying to return it back to Hales. Those two linking up once more. Options both left and right. Here it comes across onto this near side. It's Paige Gardner. But it was always going wide of the goalkeeper's near left-hand post. Again, though, just a promising sign that for St. Joseph's. And that time on the counter-attack as they got bodies forward. And, well, worked the shooting opportunity, but it was... Always probably going to take something special to beat the goalkeeper from that sort of distance and with the angle that was on offer as well. <laughs> 16 minutes on the clock, it's still goalless. Here at the home of Stoke City Football Club in the under-18 Women's Super League final between Sandwell and St. Joseph's. It's again another loose ball from the goalkeeper, but one which she that time gets away with, and then the long ball forward. Again, the referee trying to play the advantage, but again, it wasn't quite a possibility, so it is once more brought back. It's the right thing to do, though, for the referee, because there's nothing more frustrating, is there, than if a referee is a bit quick on the whistle and Stops a potential attack in its stride. There is a concern here, I think, for one of the St. Joseph's players. I think it's Lauren Hales down, but I think she's just putting her boot back on. So we'll be back to her feet any second now. We've seen a lot from Samuel, them trying to play with the ball in their own half, but this time taking the chance to send it long forward. It's only met, though, with the strong header back. What that has provided Samuel, though, is a progression and space up the field. Sent away by Megan Waring, who's done her job superbly well so far at the back for St. Joseph's. Oh, lovely footwork then trying to find the pass to the right but it was cut out before reaching anyone in blue and white it's back now though with Burton a strong play in midfield and it's that midfield battle which might be at the forefront really from what we've seen so far these two teams do look well matched and usually in a game like that it's the, the midfield in which the game is won and lost really St. Joseph's here with the defending to do at the moment but the impressive Mitchell in the middle of the park was on hand again loose pass that time from Waring it's the first thing I think she's done wrong
Sanwell again there get the decision mentioned earlier that they actually finished second in their qualifying group but that's the the beauty of the competition really that they can finish second like that and then still go on to to make amends as they did in the quarter-final with the win over the group C winners heartbreak 2-2 it was in the group game but Sanwell running out 3-1 winners in the all-important quarter-final match and it really was the all-important fixture because after Thomas Telford failed to pick up a single point then Hartbury and Sanwell both knew that they'd be going through from Group C Mitchell didn't get the touch right that time again though it was an error which didn't prove as costly as it might have the goalkeeper's clearance didn't get off the ground which again was risky it has brought about this subsequent follow-up period of pressure but it's a long-range audacious effort to say the least from that sort of distance and it was always rising high over the crossbar just trying her look there Amelia Lightfoot it's I think actually the first shot that Sandwell have had in these opening 20 minutes so perhaps just a little bit of a sense of frustration for Sandwell that they haven't been able to test the St Joseph's goal and goalkeeper Gibbs but I don't think they were going to test her with an effort like that Probably the closest that either side have come so far, though, was the opportunity that we saw for St. Joseph's when it was palmed away by the opposite number one, Eddie May Lock. It's going to be Gibbs here to restart. Supporters in the house on this near side trying to urge their team on. It's out here around the halfway line. Throwing taken from between the two technical areas. Possession lost there in midfield, but it's only one back momentary, and then there's a battle forward on again. Taking charge there, though, Waring as she stepped forward to do just that. Appeals for offside, but the flag there stays down. Out over on the left flank, it's a good looking ball into the penalty area as well, it was just hung up high. The goalkeeper wasn't able to come and get that one. And it's turned behind there by McFarlane and it will be a corner. The game's first corner set piece in actual fact and here it goes the way of St Joseph's. Had the testing ball into the penalty area from a wide free kick from this side, let's see what they've got here with the corner delivery from Gardner. Gardner, it's a good looking ball in again. The referee is going to stop play here for the moment as there's one of the Sanwell College players still down. There's a, a heavy whack there from Lauren Hales, I think, as Hales just went to try to get her head to the ball, but OK to continue, which is good to see the referee happy for the restart but it's just a couple of occasions now though when St Joseph's have managed to deliver a dangerous looking ball into the penalty area hasn't come to fruition for them on either occasion but certainly a, a warning sign for Sanwell good challenge after the initial mistake to recover and get the ball back there idea on the return pass the referee was happy with the challenge despite the ball not being won maybe to do with the fact that the ball was very much nearly out of play anyway it will just be the throwing but I think sometimes you might see a, a referee give a free kick for that one battling hard out there the Sanwell skipper that we just got a shot of there Abby Lloyden and it's Abby Borton here who has gone to retrieve the ball for the throw-in St Joseph's there trying to bring it forward into the attacking half but the referee 
They're just waved away any appeals for a foul as it's Delglin, I think, who has stayed down for the time being. Oh, it's a loose touch and then a, a slip as well. Just lost a footing there, momentarily wearing, but she was bailed out by her fellow defenders. Still defending to do, though, for St. Joseph's. It's forward once more and the official's decision is corner. Take a look again. The referee definitely pointed for a, a corner to begin with. Not particularly convinced, but there we are. Back to her feet there. Paige Gardner just came across onto the near side for a little bit of treatment, I think, and just readjusting the strapping that she has on her right knee as well there, Gardner. But it will be a corner then, and defending here to do for St. Joseph's. Two hands in the air is the signal from the corner taker. It's a really good-looking ball in as well. Such a difficult one to defend that when it swings in the way it did. Back out to the original corner taker, and it's going to end up behind again for another corner. Best little spell of possession. And then this follow-up pressure that Sanwell College have been able to conjure up in this first half. Again, it's another in-swinger, and it's headed away at the near post area. It need to, needed to be as well, because I think that one might have been curling all the way in. Goalkeeper was desperately scrambling across a goal line. It was well defended, though, I think, by the captain, Bates, who got the header away. It's forward here to Delglin. Delgin though was crowded out and Denver was in close attendance as well to help Sanwell win the ball back. It was always second favourite there to make anything of it though wasn't she Delgin just by the fact that she was completely outnumbered. Now Farquhar Harson. Over the head of Farquhar Harson that time it does break here though for Borton, who'd made the run forwards. Forward from that right flank and had advanced there into a much more attacking and narrow position. Up now to Denver, who has seen a lot of the ball in midfield for Sanwell and is trying to make things happen. Likewise, the captain Lloyd, and as she there tries to deliver into the box, but it was only against the first St. Joseph's defender. The game, though, you sense just beginning to open up a little bit now. Not completely, but there's certainly signs of the door just being open. Oh, lovely return ball there with the flick back round the corner. Mitchell tried to go alone there, Mitchell, and had the option to the left. Maybe if she had that moment back, Mitchell would have looked to try to play the pass to Dale Glint, but trusted her ability there, but in the end wasn't able to get the shot away at goal. And as I say, I think if she had the chance back there, she might have played the pass. A bouncing ball which was misjudged to begin with. Back to Locke and she will once again restart as Sanwell looked to bring it forward from the back again. It was definitely an intent of high pressure though from St. Joseph's who certainly not sitting off. Very much the message I'm sure will be that if we are going to press from the St. Joseph's manager Paige Shorten's point of view this is if they're going to press then they need to press in packs and really all go together it's going to be difficult otherwise for Zania Delglin if she's isolated 1v4 really at times in that low focal point of pressure Wearing again then got to the ball first Butcher Great ball. Referee says no foul, just a good tackle to get the ball back off Del Glynn. Likewise as well, was it from Del Glynn? It was. And in the end, it's Del Glynn then who is fouled. And Owen, the Sandwell offender. Just a talking to as well there. From 
referee Smith to Olivia Owen. Past Denver and forward for St. Joseph's. Gardner that time though was perhaps just not quite on the same page as Delkin. That one will be a Samuel free kick. No questions asked about the award of it. mentioned earlier that St. Joseph's have scored 10 more goals than Sandwell en route to the final today well they actually won 10-0 in their final Group E match against Shenfield High School it's a large reason as to that when you take the, the context of it into consideration I suppose no goals here today though so far in the opening half an hour there haven't really been any golden opportunities either but it only takes one moment Good link-up play there from Hales and across as well, all the way onto this left flank now. Hales is waiting in the centre, so to Gardner. If the ball is delivered in there, it's turned away though by Abby Burton. Burton again, first to it, but Bates managed to send it back and keep possession for her team. Up now though to Farquhar Harson. Farquhar Harson with a lovely flick off too. Farquhar Harson, the intended target then. Of the return ball, but never quite made its way through. Mitchell gets it back from Burton that time, and maybe a call for a foul, but there was no decision forthcoming. Sanwell that time just with the clearance, and it presents the opportunity back in. St. Joseph's half of the court, so to speak, for them to come back forwards. But they weren't able to do that. It's a definite three at the back system isn't it for St Joseph's which at times turns into a, a back five in defence and certainly might do if they were to get themselves ahead but it's defending here to do for St Joseph's at the moment in towards Farquhar Harson. Farquhar Harson still battling for it but in the end battling too hard and it's a foul there on Mitchell Mitchell doing superbly well just to get her body in the way there and just shielded the ball away from Farquhar Harson. Looks as though we're going to have a first substitution then here. And it's going to be Sarah Bracero, by the looks of things, to come on here for St. Joseph's. Roll on, roll off substitutes, remember, of course. So both managers with the option of making as many changes as they wish as the game progresses. I'm sure we'll see a plethora of substitutions as the game does progress into the second half, into its latter stages. That's a first change there with Bracero introduced. Maybe just looking to add that little bit more attacking spark. Paige Shorten. Let's see if it works. Here is Bracero with her first involvement. Good challenge though from Denver. Did superbly well there to win the ball. The Samuel midfielder. It's a slip, but one which Owen in the end got away with. There at the back for Samuel. Up to Denver. Good hold up play again. She's been impressive in midfield for Sanwell and just sense that the more that they can get her on the ball, then perhaps the greater success Sanwell will have as the game 
does progress forward. Closing in now on the final 10 minutes of this first half. McFarlane away from Bracero, who's been given quite the introduction after the strong tackle from Denver and then the skill to just see the ball away from her there. Another stoppage in play here. Referee just halting proceedings, but... Happy for the game to resume now. Mitchell. Waring, that time has given the ball away. She's across to try to make amends. It's past Waring though, but it won't get past the covering St. Joseph's defender. Zavia Shek it was who was back there to help out after Waring initially gave the ball back to Sandwell. That time it will be a St. Joseph's throw it. A well matched, even contest is the best way of describing what we've seen so far. It's the type of game which she sent maybe just needs the one goal, the opening goal, for it to then explode into life. Of course a case in this first half, and perhaps the, the message from both bosses was maybe a case of, look, let's not lose the game in the first 45 minutes. We can try to give ourselves a real good basis to then go and build from in the second half. Understandable if it was. Waring through the midfield lines there all the way up to Hales. It's, those mo it's these moments which St. Joseph's have looked most threatening in and there's a good ball into the centre again. It will be collected on this near side now. Delglin sends it back in there. Header is more up than away, but it was going back to the goalkeeper, taken out of the hands of Locke, though. Just those moments in which the midfield has been opened up, though, I think for St. Joseph's, that will be the, the promising factor. Again, just finding a pocket of space. These sorts of situations. It's a bouncing ball through that time, which is hacked away, but it's again emergency-style defending at the back for Sandwell recoveries being made With the ball there on the edge of the penalty area Bracero then tried to play it back across did play it to Hales and Bracero wanted the return ball just beginning to up the ante a little bit now though St. Joseph's and put their foot on the gas maybe as we close in on half time let's see well not with a Crossfield ball like that though, which is a disappointing one. Following this game today, do make sure you stay with us because after the trophy presentation for this final come full time, we have the under-18 men's Super League final as well. Harris City Academy Crystal Palace will face off with Bishop Burton College in the final of that one. All eyes here though. Still on the Women's Super League final as the strike there was sent in by Farquhar Harsin, but it was just trickled through to the goalkeeper. Farquhar Harsin definitely the focal point of Samuel attack though and at times in this first half she's looked lively and bright. Good example of it there as she battles hard to get to the ball. Farquhar Harsin trying to turn away from the defender though but couldn't that time good defending once more Butcher that time doing her job well St Joseph's have already gone one better than last season 
They were beaten semi-finalists in the competition last campaign. Of course, though, already with the runners-up medal intact, that will be the case in the worst-case scenario for them today. And, of course, they want to get their hands on the silverware. The trophy come full-time, but Sanwell very much with different ideas. What you would say at this point, I think, undeniably, really, nil-nil is a fair scoreline at this stage. Sometimes in games as tight as this, it just takes that one moment of individual quality to find that all-important breakthrough. Bracera. Hales there again with the setback. Her link-up play has been really good for St. Joseph's. Hales in the centre again, but it's over her head that time. Just overcooked the delivery on that one. Sanwell. He'll get the decision with the throw-in. Wonder what's going through the minds of both managers, Ryan Hamilton in the technical area for Sanwell and Paige Shorten in the technical area to the left for St. Joseph's. I don't think either boss will be particularly disheartened with what they've seen in this opening 40 minutes, but then again, perhaps both will be asking for more from their sides if half time were to come now. Bracero on her bike after that one down the right, but was always second favourite. And it proves to just be a, a clearance away, really, from the goalkeeper. And that presents possession back. Butcher with a misplaced pass that time. Maybe just lacking the composure that we saw from them early on there, though, Sanwell, as it was just a more route one ball forward in search of Farquhar Harson. Trying to take that one down McFarlane, but still bouncing around the close proximity. Lloydlin, in the end, took charge of it and did very well. Oh, under pressure there. Under pressure from Hales, who has been tenacious in this first half, and that probably just goes to epitomise that. Wait to see, of course, how much stoppage time we will have at the end of this first 45 when we reach that point. Haven't really had too many stoppages at all in this first half. Had the substitution, of course, with the introduction of Sarah Bracero from the St. Joseph's bench, and well, Sanwell still yet to make a change. Wonder whether we'll see. A change from Stanwell though at half time perhaps. Clearance away there was miscued to begin with, but it is out on this near side now. Despite the fact that we haven't had many stoppages, it has been a bit stop start in the way in which the ball has been out on so many an occasion in this first period. With errors like that, it's out of play again. Either side really yet to, to play the, the quality of football that we know they can. Now, though, this is a promising moment for Sanwell, and well, in the end, it's a tame effort into the side netting. It was a warning sign, though, from the St. Joseph's College defence, and I'm sure the Alarms would have been flashing on their radar just for a split second as the first defender was beaten. Mitchell. Again, just a sign of frustration with the misplaced pass. What you would say, though, is the majority of those 
misplaced passes like that for Sanwell have been in the areas where if you're going to have a misplaced pass you want them they haven't misplaced balls in their defensive third to present a, an opportunity to the opposition how it might be the case the way in which they have in this first half tried to play the game Denver there with the foul and the free kick here is one for Megan Waring to take Waring there just beckoning to teammates for maybe a, a shorter option but she goes long with it in the end only straight though to Burton back to Waring nice control then just took the heavy touch though Denver has come off looking a little worse for wear there the offside flag has been raised anyway it's the free kick that's been given for the offside and the referee there calls time on the half blows the whistle for half time and still goalless here at Stoke City in the final of the under 18s women's super league no breakthrough in that first 45 Denver there has stayed down for the time being as well to receive treatment hopefully she'll be able to come back out for the second half but at half time here at Stoke City it's still Samuel College nil St Joseph's College nil UCFB is the university campus of football business with our campuses based at the iconic Wembley Stadium in London and our Etihad campus in Manchester. Once graduated from UCFB, you'll have gained the relevant skills and experience to start your career in sports. Over 90% of UCFB grads are in full-time employment within six months of graduating and two-thirds are working in football and sport. Here at UCFB, we have graduates in some of the world's top sporting organisations. UCFB have produced multiple alumni that have worked in 19 out of the 20 Premier League clubs and 49 out of the 72 EFL clubs. Our students have access to regular guest speaker sessions where we bring in experienced names from the world of football to help and inspire students on their path to success. If you're passionate about sport and ready to kick off your career in one of the world's most exciting industries, head to ucfb.ac.uk to find out more.
Welcome back then for the second half here at Stoke City Football Club. It is the second half of the first game today. It's the English Schools FA Under 18's Women's Super League final, but still no goals at half time here between Sandwell and St Joseph's. Let's hope for some goals in this second period. And the goalkeeper was particularly tested in that first 45, which would have been a disappointment, I'm sure for the two sets of attacking players. Both defences though on top in that first period. Let's see if that remains the case. Or if we do, get a breakthrough goal. As I said in the first half, it does feel like the, the type of game and the big occasion that it is today as well, where maybe a breakthrough opener might then lead to further goals as well. Let's see how it all plays out. Still half the game to go. Plus, of course, Penalty shootout should we need it. Well, we can see there Twania Costa Demba has returned back to the field, having received some treatment at the end of that first half. Right on the stroke of half time, she stayed down, but good to see that Demba is back out there for the second period for Sanwell. It does look as though there's going to be a half time substitution made as well. We'll try to get that confirmed in just a moment for you. Samuel players together at the moment out on the field of play just going through their final preparations as then we see Lauren Hales return back out onto the field as well for St Joseph's but there are the Samuel players goalkeeper Enime Lock with some words of advice perhaps as well to the striker Romeo Farquharson who was bright in that first period Farquharson but never quite got the shooting opportunity that she wanted. Always say though, don't they, that for strikers it just takes that one chance, that one moment, and it's very true as well. What that first half has done has ultimately meant that this women's Super League final is going to be decided now on the Mini match of 45 minutes, really. Both sides having had a little bit of a, a taster of the other in that opening half, but it all comes down to the second period now. As the two teams there break away from their huddles, and it will then be St. Joseph's 
to get us underway once more at the start of this second period. Sandwell with the kickoff in the first half, St Joseph's with the kickoff in the second, and it's St Joseph's who here in the second period are attacking the goal to the left. All loose touch that might cause a problem, but in the end Mitchell was able to recover. Up there in search of Lauren Hales in attack, but it's back there to the goalkeeper. Not sure whether there was a half-time change made in the end. By the way, just still trying to work that out for you, but there was the change in the first half, remember, when Sarah Bracero came on for St. Joseph's. Oh, very close to that was Hales and Locke, who we saw in the first half, display her composure with the ball at her feet at the back. Pretty much did the same there, and it was a really good ball as well forward from Locke to kick-start this attack forward as well for Sandwell. Calm, composed, comfortable. In possession, the goalkeeper. Might have some regular goalkeeping work to do there, but that's a really good tackle. Again, strong into the challenge. There, Twiney Acosta Demba. Saw that from her on numerous occasions in that first half, and none less so in actual fact than the challenge which left her down at the end of the first period. And again, a really, really good tackle. Straight into the midriff there of the St Joseph's College defender, and left her down on the ground just winded here I think at the moment still to come today of course we have the men's Super League final as well in the same under 18's category Harris City Academy Crystal Palace will be up against Bishop Burton College in that one, if you're waiting around for that, around a, a three o'clock kickoff time for that one. We will as well at the end of this game have the trophy presentation on the field of play come full time as well, so do stick around for that. Plenty of action still to come. Plenty of time still to go in this game in particular, of course, as it's out once more for the throw-in. Lexi Pryke there turning that one out. Pryke again got to the ball first. And that time he goes out the other side of the corner flag. Here for the corner. Well, we saw a couple of really good corner deliveries down this end of the field for St. Joseph's. In the first half, we also saw a, a testing one for the St. Joseph's goalkeeper of the in-swinging delivery. Let's see if Samuel can mirror that. Here at the second period, it's into a dangerous area. Around that six-yard line, the goalkeeper wasn't able to come for it. It probably is those aerial balls into the box, those corner deliveries that for both teams now have looked like the most likely route to goal. Throw in there hasn't been overturned, it was just given the other way to begin with. It's strange in that sense, isn't it, really, that the high balls into the box have looked the most likely route to goal, because in every other aspect, the two defences have been on top. Did manage to get that one clear, of course, St Joseph's, but it wasn't particularly convincing to begin with as the ball was allowed to just drop and bounce and it's allowed to drop and bounce there as well too into the feet of the striker Farquhar Hassett oh, first time from Burton it's allowed to bounce through as well Butcher allowed for that to happen Wittick there with the ball back it's swung in left footed first time closest to it then but it's out now though but Sandwell with the early pressure at the start of this second half but saying that maybe St Joseph's can break forward themselves Hales there's a runner to the left as well there's a couple in actual fact but Neither Delklin there or Schiefer was found. It does end up out of play behind the goal of the goalkeeper. It's an unforced error, really, which means that that one has brought about this corner. And a corner this time for St. Joseph's.
outswinging delivery this time, closest to it, Lexi Pride, but she never met the ball. Denver did well again. Five minutes now played in the second half, and we're still as we were at half time, but there have been brighter signs of a goal maybe being on the horizon. It's a foul. Referee was in a good position there to make the judgment, give the decision. Free header at the back that time, which here drops back to Delglin. Delglin on the turn and trying to feed it further upfield, but I think that one will just run out, will it? Yeah, just about. Goes out for the throw in, but it's a throw in for St Joseph's. The referee saw a touch on its way through. for the player closest to the throw and taker there, Zavia Shek, but never came her way. It's a cross come shot in the end, really. It was outside the penalty area from Zania Delquin, but the goalkeeper was able to catch. Loose pass, but loose touch as well. It's back here with St. Joseph's. It's been a good response to that early second half Samuel pressure here for St. Joseph's. It's a header back there for Bates, the captain. And it's a really good stop flying to her right there. Ellie May Lock, but on the follow up, it's there again, and it's in. Well, a great save to begin with, but Lock couldn't keep the second effort out. And it's St. Joseph's College here who get the breakthrough. There's seven minutes gone in the second half. Brilliant save to begin with but it will go down as a goalkeeping error with the effort on the rebound as we take a look again at the replay it was the direct ball into the penalty area which caused the problems Bates struck it so sweetly that's a brilliant stop but ultimately it won't count for anything as it was then spilt in and into the back of the net It's Tate Schiefer, the player who's got the goal for St. Joseph's. Schiefer, the scorer. And it's 1-0. Such a disappointing one, isn't it, for the Sanwell shot stopper. Such a high-quality stop to begin with. Had the first one gone in, then I don't think any questions would have been asked of the goalkeeper, but ultimately all eyes then will be on her as it was just through the body of the Samuel goalkeeper in the end and well St Joseph's and the scorer Schiefer won't care how the, how the ball has ended up in the back of the net it's just the fact that it has I think for St Joseph's that then brought about the jubilation of the celebrations and the onus now on Samuel to come back hit back and respond Desperately tried to keep that one in there, Bracero, but it was always one which looked likely to just run out. Sanwell now just need to put that behind them, though. Still plenty of time here for them to respond, but. Paige Shorten, who we just got a, a shot of there from the camera on the near side, is certainly going to be a happy manager at this stage. Forward from Lock. There's a Samuel player who here has stayed down. Referee's attention has been brought to that as well, so the game will be stopped for the time being. 
didn't quite see myself what actually happened in amongst all of that there. But there's definitely concern here. I think it's Izzy Whittock who is down at the moment for Stanwell. What it does provide here is a, an almost timeout situation. As you can see, all of the Stanwell players actually coming across onto the near side just to, to get some much welcome fluids on board I'm sure and also the important messages there from the boss Ryan Hamilton out come the water bottles and Sanwell just taking this as an opportunity to try to put what has gone before them behind them just reset move forward from here and St Joseph's also doing likewise but I'm sure it's a much happier camp there for the team in red and white Schiefer though with the breakthrough at this stage on the rebound from the initial strike from the skipper Bates and when Bates struck that well she must have thought she'd scored herself let's have a look at it again on the replay it was interesting wasn't it because it was Samuel who actually started the second half the stronger of the two sides but it was ultimately this moment that led to the opening goal as I said brilliant stop from Locke to begin with and then Schiefer just sent it back in on the follow-up and in was where it ended up you can see how much it means as well to St Joseph's and their players they're celebrating together very much though still work to do still more than half an hour of normal time plus of course stoppage time that I'm sure this time here for this particular stoppage will be added on for still to play Good to see there the Sunwell player back to her feet there, Wittick. Four outfield options from the Sunwell bench there. Warming up. Synchronised warm up by the looks of things. Doesn't seem as though there's going to be a change, and it does look as though Wittick then is going to be coming back on, which is good to see. But those four are the options for Ryan Hamilton if he wishes to make a change or is indeed forced into making one as well. Substitute goalkeeper for Samuel is Neve Ellison and then the four that we've just seen there, Melissa Pritchard, Ashleen Joseph Francis, Rhiannon Armstrong and Erin May Fox. A reminder of the substitutes as well from the side who are here. A goal up. Sarah Bracero has already been introduced. So the four that remain are Amelie Clark, Natalie Mashon Ganyika. Lila James and Kelsey Morgan. Back to the action then. After the referee there restarted playing with the uncontested drop ball. Flip round the corner, but nobody there in the blue and white shirt. Trying to slip that one forward first time and with good reason to do so as well because there was a pocket of space in behind there. And there's a pocket of space in behind here too, but the offside flag goes up. Just to judge to have made her run slightly early there, Lightfoot. Seemingly playing in a, a more central role by the looks of things in this second half. Up there in support of Farquhar Hassan, who was perhaps at times isolated in attack in that first 45 minutes for Sanwell, but. Amelia Lightfoot there just going a little early. Line well held by the St. Joseph's back line. Again, another really good tackle there from Denver. She's been superb defensively, in particular in midfield today for Sanwell. Lost count now of the number of strong challenges that she's put in like that. Strong but fair challenges, each and every one of them. Goal scorer Schiefer battling for that one. Breaks now for the striker Hales. 
Sheen then slips it through, but the goalkeeper with good judgment. Really good start in position there. Some more goalkeeper needed to have as well, and was alert to the danger. Sixty minutes now on the clock. Samuel nil, St Joseph's one. Again, another brilliant tackle from Twani Acosta Demba. Such a good challenge, such a good strong tackler in midfield. Throwing there has been taken relatively quickly up to Farquhar Harson. Farquhar Harson here on the turn, that's another brilliant tackle. That time to touch the ball away from Farquhar Harson on the follow up where it's that going to drop in the end, it's just. Not a yard or two wide. Great tackle to begin with. There from Lexi Pryke, I think. And the corner was given by the referee. After the shot on its way through, took the touch and the deflection. So then an opportunity here for Sanwell as they look to find themselves an equaliser. It's an opportunity to load the penalty area. Not just the 18-yard box but also the 6-yard box as well by the looks of things. Plenty of bodies in amongst the 6-yard box at the moment as well. In swinging left-footed delivery over the goalkeeper and it's headed just wide. It's a glorious opportunity for 1-1. One -one. But Farquhar Harsen unable to hit the target. over the goalkeeper it's a golden chance but it goes begging there for Sanwell Romeo Farquhar said it was who got her head to the ball just didn't get the direction that she wanted maybe Sanwell will be left to rue that missed opportunity let's see again good judgment from Locke who wants more that time actually came out of the penalty area to clear the danger away. It's bouncing ball in behind. The goalkeeper that time didn't come forward at the other end to begin with at least. And then having hesitated, Gibbs in the end made the correct decision. Relatively good response though for Sanwell. That's something that I would say since that concession. Into the penalty area, but not all the way into the centre. Breaks back here for the goal scorer Schiefer. There's a player down here again for Sanwell, which is of a concern. a throw for Samuel when we are ready to resume. Abby Burton there with the ball in her hands. Provides me an opportunity to tell you, the viewers, that you will actually have the opportunity as well to take part in the power of the match vote around 10 minutes from full time. That will go live over on the English Schools FA Twitter page. There will be a couple of nominations involved in that for either team. <laughs> Sanwell here then with the throw in as they attack towards the goal there down below the Coldwell construction stand which is where the away support are usually housed here at Stoke City. Hooked away there on the clearance by Mitchell. It's only coming back though. It's a long range effort on goal. Gibbs was always going to gather that though. Saw it all the way and did the job well. So expect that you would, it's a save I should say, that you would expect the goalkeeper to make, but 
nonetheless needed saving over the head that time of Farquhar Harson the player who remember had that opportunity just what two three minutes ago the header from the corner it's a foul that time Zavia Shek there, the number 17, the offender, didn't get to the ball. Burton then stands behind this as the obvious option to take here. The lone option in taking for Sandwell. It's a good ball in as well. It's headed away that time, but only to the edge of the penalty area. It's a bit of a, a skewed effort, goal bound, but it wasn't really goal bound in the end. It was struck with the, the outside of the foot which meant that it was curling away Burton there with the throw in again she certainly seems to be keen to, to get on with things now for Sandwell and with good reason as well to try to restart the game quickly at this stage still a long way to go but always important I feel that when any team are a goal down that they just show that bit of urgency now so many times we see teams run out of time Sandwell here won't want that to be the case. It's another corner. It's very much highlighted the problems that they caused the St. Joseph's College defence from this corner delivery last time. Let's see what they make of this. It's a deeper delivery there, though. Will it be kept in? It is just about to begin with, but then the touch took it over the white line. It was a similar sort of ball played in from that corner, but in the end, too much on it that time. Joseph's now with it inside the centre circle as they try to spread the plate here out wide left onto the left flank with the substitute Sarah Bracero but she wasn't able to get to that one have to wonder don't you at which stage Sanwell will opt to look for the options from their substitutes bench and probably surpassed the mark at which that would usually be expected here's Bracero Rosero hangs that one up high in the penalty area, but it's a cross which always favoured the goalkeeper. But I certainly wouldn't expect it to be too long before we see those changes, perhaps a, a flurry of changes or maybe a, a double, triple change made from the Sanwell bench. 68 minutes played now. to the feet there of Mitchell swept forward first time looking for Bracero here's Borton though Borton forward there looking for Denver there might be a shooting opportunity as well here for Sanwell into the penalty area trying to work the angle to get the shot away it's still there it's not dealt with back to Denver the block then was made but it was a Dangerous moment there at the back for St. Joseph's and might be another dangerous moment on the horizon. Good tackle that time. Waring, who was superb in the first half in particular there with the tackle, but lost out in the aftermath. Let's take a look again at the replay. Just wonder whether the opportunity was there to maybe get the strike in earlier. Possibly thought the shooting chance was on there for McFarlane, but never quite sat up the way that perhaps you wanted it to long thrown into the box that time which bounces again and that's always a sign of a problem that's onto the edge of the penalty area once more but it was miscued that time and was dispossessed and Sanwell they did well to begin with, but then they nearly played themselves into trouble again. Out now for the throw-in after 
good work there from Owen, but she's been brought back to the correct, good, correct position from which to take this throw in there. Owen there with the switch of play. Here's the goal scorer Schiefer. Across from left to right there, over on the right flank. The flag there stays down against Hales, but Hales never got to the ball anyway. It was really well defended. Clearance there, though, didn't match the initial quality of tackle, and it's very nearly slipped through from Zania Delglin in search of Hales once more. the pendulum now just beginning to swing back in favour of St Joseph's good tackle how many times have we said that today brilliant challenge once more check into the centre Hales it's still there 2-0 Leah Mitchell smashes the ball home and it looks like a very long way back now for Sanwell St Joseph's double their lead and it's Leah Mitchell who made absolutely no mistake with the finish, no keeping that one out. From the throw-in, back it went and into the penalty area. Just took control and a brilliant strike from Mitchell. St Joseph's now, it looks as though well on their way to lifting the trophy. to feel that she deserves that goal as well today Leah Mitchell she's been superb in midfield opted there to, to get forward into the 18 yard box and well, that decision ultimately paying dividends still needed finishing as it came her way there might be a bit of an inquest in the Sanwell defence as to how she was allowed so much time and space in the penalty area like that from a throw in and the cross which came after but again St Joseph's won't worry too much about that. It's a great strike. Medical attention here being called for. Abby Borton has to play it down. St Joseph's now then with a cushion on the scoreboard. And they'll feel a lot happier about the situation which they find themselves in than they would have done at 1 0. Of course, they, even at that stage, would have been the happier side. But it's such a disheartening goal that for Sanwell because, again, as was the case when the first goal went in, if you take the five minutes before, then it's against the run of play. Sanwell had been the side looking the more likely team to get the goal, but this was how it came, the second for St. Joseph's. Kept it down, hit the target, and from that sort of distance, there was going to be no mistake for Mitchell. Of course, I'm sure the message really will be to keep the intensity high, make sure you maintain the standards, but also really perhaps a sense of game management now as well for St. Joseph's. Not necessarily talking about the way in which they might see time out, but also just the way in which a stage like this in a, in a cup final of any kind, it's important that the side two goals up like this is going to keep playing their game, keep playing the game how they want it played. Don't allow Sanwell to even have a, a sniff of the St. Joseph's goal. Because what you would add is that if Sanwell were to get one back, then the picture does change. Momentum can do funny things in football and especially in cup finals. So if Sanwell were to get one back quickly, albeit that has looked unlikely by the one-headed opportunity, if Sanwell were to score, then we might have a grandstand finish on our hands. A 
into the final quarter of an hour, but it's worth adding as well that there will, of course, be a substantial period of stoppage time, you would have to feel. There was nothing added on at the end of the first half, but we very much expect there to be time added on here, and I think there is going to be a, an enforced substitution as well here for Sandwell. They're waiting in the wings, ready to come on. Here's Ashleen Joseph Francis. I mentioned that so many of the Sanwell College players in the first half, I said that they play for, for West Bromwich Albion Women's Academy, but Joseph Francis, not one of those. She's actually a member of the Walsall Wood ladies team. But it is going to be an attacking change regularly. A player who plays up front, I'm expected to an attacking introduction at this stage anyway option really I guess for the manager from the substitute bench was between the two forward thinking players that he has amongst the substitutes Ashley and Joseph Francis or Rhiannon Armstrong but it looks as though it's going to be Joseph Francis then to come on I believe it's Abby Borton there who's still down for Sanwell Just to add injury to insult, really, isn't it, for Sanwell at this stage, which is just so disappointing for them. There's another member of the Sanwell team who is just receiving makeshift physio treatment for cramp as well over on the far side. Izzy Wittig there acting as stand-in physio whilst the regular physio sees to... Abby Burton closer to the main camera position on the near side. It's actually turning out to be quite a substantial stoppage here, isn't it? But the story of the game so far, then, not many chances were there in that first half. Half chances perhaps here and there, but it was a very even contest and impossible really to have to a side deserving of going into half-time a goal up it was nil-nil at the midway point but then the breakthrough goal came for St Joseph's Tate Schiefer on the rebound from a really good save after a Emily Bates strike ultimately getting the breakthrough and then the Liam Mitchell goal that we saw just a couple of minutes prior to this stoppage Bolton here has been down for an extended period now. Helped back to her feet, but very much moving gingerly here, Borton. Plays for Solihull Moors. Abby Borton, but it doesn't look as though she'll be playing any further part in this game. I do hope that she's OK, and it's not a too significant injury. A couple of extra balls onto the field of play at the moment for St Joseph's as they just ensure that they keep themselves warm, keep themselves fresh before the restart. But Abby Borton here off to a standing ovation and round of applause helped off here on the near side does look to be an injury of big concern that for Sanwell and Borton highlighted as well by the time which she spent down on the floor that substitution there has been made though with Ashley and Joseph Francis on and of course Borton off So finally we do restart then. The referee with the uncontested drop ball again. <laughs> Offside flag there goes up this time and it was well, a, a close run thing really. 
Sarah Bracero maybe just went a, a split second too early, but it wasn't a particularly clear and obvious decision to give. The linesman there just affording the defending team the benefit of the doubt, perhaps. Ball in behind. The goalkeeper this time does come for it out to the D of the penalty area. Well judged. We saw Gibbs reluctant to come and claim a similar style ball forward earlier, but no doubt in her mind that time to come for that one. Out again here to Bracero. Good tackle though, again from Denver. Denver holding off Bracero, but she's going back towards her own goal. The referee in the end felt that it was enough in there for a foul. Tony Acosta Denver did really well again. Back here to the skipper Lloyden who would have been dreaming of course of getting her hands on the trophy and there's still time for the game to change but at this stage it's going to be her opposite captain who gets that honour at full time. Breaks out here onto the edge of the penalty area and it's just dragged wide. Farquhar Haasen there with the opportunities it came back to her. Certainly not as golden an opportunity as the one which she put wide with the header from the corner, but it was an opportunity in that nonetheless. Long diagonal switch of play there. Denver though in the back line now by the looks of things for Sanwell, but she's been dispossessed that time. Uncharacteristic, really, of what we've seen from her today. Denver's been beaten as well by Bracero on the turn. Still Bracero back across. Surely three it is. Surely now that will be that for St. Joseph's. Excellent play from Sarah Bracero in setting up the opportunity. And it's a second of the game for Leah Mitchell. Mitchell with a brace, St. Joseph's with three. And it's a mountain to climb now for Samwell. As we see again on the replay, just too hot to handle there for the Samwell defence. Calm, composed as she went past the second challenge as well, Bracero. Good save to begin with, but again it was the rebound effort. Nothing that the goalkeeper could do to stop that one that time, though, from Mitchell. Two for Mitchell, three for St. Joseph's. It's the second half, which now... Side three, three goals to the good, really taken by Storm. They're storming forward again. No thought of just trying to keep hold of the lead at this stage. No, it's a good, strong tackle again, which has actually left Lauren Hales down. Be a big sense of frustration about that tackle as well from Olivia Rowan. I think maybe the expression on the face of the Sunwell defender tells you all you need to know about the feelings within the Sunwell camp as well, and it's understandable, of course. It's not the outcome that they wanted. It's been frustrating for them in this second half. Very frustrating in that. St. Joseph's here readying a substitution with Lila James here being prepared. And we are then going to see this substitution as well. As James here has given her introduction for the final five minutes of the 90, but remember, we are likely to have a substantial period of stoppage time as well. Check. Get past 
against Denver that time. The decision in the end after consultation, I think, between the officials via the communication headsets that all match officials nowadays wear was there to give the goal kick. Hales. Would it get even better here for St. Joseph's College? Mitchell on a hat trick now, remember, bursting into the penalty area. Had an opportunity in the first half, too, didn't she, Mitchell? Maybe on that first occasion when she should have played the pass, but another day, Mitchell could have had a hat trick. And there's still time for that to come her way as well, but it's Sanwell here breaking forwards. Farquhar Harson into the penalty area, across to the right, and there's an option as well to the right. But in the end, it was a shot which was skewed to the right. It was always bending away wide. So then, the vote is now live over on the English Schools FA Twitter page. At Schools Football is the Twitter handle to go across to. You can take part in the play of the match vote and vote for either of the four nominees Abby Borton Twanier Costa Demba are the nominations for Sandwell but on the wrong side of the scoreline here and up for the player of the match award for St Joseph's are Megan Waring the defender and the twice scorer Leah Mitchell at schools football to take part in that vote and the winner of the player of the match will be presented with their individual trophy on the field of play at full time. Feels for offside there, but there's only the single raise of a hand in actual fact, and it didn't look to be offside. Samuel allowed to continue. Up to Farquhar Harson. Good tackle again, though, from Waring, who has been superb in defence today the centre-back position for St. Joseph's. Farquhar Harson again, the flag stays down. Farquhar Harson for goal, it's against the crossbar. That's three chances now that Farquhar Harson has had. That one by far the most difficult of them, but it's actually the closest that she's gone. Very nearly just dipped over the head of the goalkeeper. And into the back of the net but it wasn't quite to be and not to be seems to be the overall memo as well today for Sanwell the substitution there is made to reintroduce Paige Gardner on in place of Lauren Hales Appeals there answered as well by the referee. Zavia Shek here to take this one for St. Joseph's. Lloyd in that one in midfield, Denver after it again and Lloyd and two but it broke away from her, Lloyd and has it now and taking charge ahead of Denver, current England under 18's international Abby Lloyd has played for the West Bromwich Albion first team as well since she was 16 years old, haven't seen too much of her today in truth though in midfield which perhaps will be a, a disappointing factor for Sandwell but very much a player with quality in abundance as has been shown on plenty of occasion. Just hasn't quite been for Lloyd and overall the Samuel team as well today. Delglin there was just tricked. Card at this late stage will stay in the pocket, I think, given the situation and the circumstances, but it is going to be a free kick. And let's see what St. Joseph's do with it.
We're into stoppage time then here at the end of the 19. There's another stoppage at the moment as well. As the physio is once again onto the field, it's going to allow for a last couple of changes here for Sandwell. Denver here, one of those being replaced. As she's withdrawn here for Melissa Pritchard to make her entry. And Erin May Fox, we also saw there, ready and waiting to come on. Sometimes things just don't go your way on the day. And I think that will be the overall message, really, for Sanwell. Didn't do much wrong in that first 45. And in truth, they haven't done much wrong in the second 45 either. Just when the three chances have, have come the way of St. Joseph's, they've been clinical in the end. OK, the goalkeeper probably will be disappointed with the first one, but the other two, there was certainly nothing that she could do to keep them out, and it was a brilliant stop to begin with anyhow. Seems as though then this one is being lined up for a direct shot on goal. And why not at this stage? Bracero does go for goal. And straight down the middle. Foul, and again, just a, a show of the frustration, I think, at this very late stage now. It's not the sort of tackle that you want to see, though, nonetheless. And indeed, the yellow card here is out of the pocket of the referee and not going to stand for a challenge like that, despite the fact that Sanwell are three goals down and we're in added time. Lloyd and the skipper. There becomes the first player cautioned here today. didn't see an indication by the way of how much stoppage time is being played or was indicated by the fourth official so I presume it's just been left down to the referee's discretion there is Erin May Fox who wasn't brought on at the, the last break in play but she's going to come on here just removing her jewellery there Fox before a very late introduction Reminders to stick around then for the trophy presentation come full time. And confirmation of the minimum of six minutes at a time, which just received. So, well, nearly four of those six minutes have already been played now. And still, Fox is waiting to come on. I think six minutes is perhaps on the slightly low side as well, given the substantial stoppages that we've had but 3-0 in a cup final like this I don't think there's going to be any change in the results and outcome of it maybe if it was 3-2 you might have seen a different indication from the fourth official it was the challenge from Lloyd and remember which has left the St. Joseph's College player down here at the moment and brought about this later stoppage it does mean that we're going to see the reintroduction here of the number nine Zainia Delglin was very much involved in the first half Delglin her involvement though in the second period has been more few and far between and amongst the substitutes bench of course for the latter part of it as well as she was replaced earlier in the half saw the concerned Abby Borton being replaced with the concerning injury earlier and it looks as though it's a, a similar concern here for St Joseph's in actual fact as well but it is going to be success then for St Joseph's in the first of their three cup finals in three successive weeks the upcoming fixtures include the Independent Schools FA Finals and the Suffolk FA County Cup Final as well. Back 
into the action for the closing stages. Bounces over halfway, it's sent back though by Megan Waring. Well, we were told to begin with that it was the six minutes that had been added on, but we've just been informed that it's actually 12 that went up on the board of the fourth official, which is perhaps more understandable given the stoppages that we had in the second half. And it does seem as though this one then is going to get over the 100 minute mark and perhaps even further than that. I thought at the time maybe six was on the light side a bit, but our informant has seemingly cut that one in half. 12 minutes. It seems as though we're going to have them played here in stoppage time. Again, though, it won't make a difference to the overall outcome and results at the end of it all. What that does provide is a little more time for the substitutes that have just been introduced to maybe get a couple extra touches out there and I'm sure it's it's going to be moments to remember for all of the players but it's ultimately only going to be a, a game in 90 minutes to remember for one set of players and that's definitely St Joseph's latest change there as well for Samuel since the introduction there of Joseph Francis it's the time then for a consolation goal. So there's going to be three in the wall here for St. Joseph's, which is perhaps a bit surprising given the wide position in which it's been taken. You would expect it to go straight over the head of all three of those, and then they're out of the game. But here it goes into the penalty area. Usually just the, the one player on the ball from that sort of a position as St. Joseph's here tried to break forwards look to maybe increase their lead even further but it's brilliant skill again from Becerro who was very much involved in the making of the second Leah Mitchell goal wasn't she didn't quite come to anything that time for her but her quality really just beginning to shine through towards the late stages Sarah Prasera is actually one of two in the St. Joseph's squad to play for Ipswich Town women's team as well, along with the player of the match nomination, Megan Waring. Those two teammates at club level and teammates here playing in the school's final two. They're both going to get their individual winner's medals, as will, of course, all of the St. Joseph's College squad. It's the trophy that matters most, and well, it just kind of sums things up that really for Samuel. Farquhar Harson set the sense of her game of the, the missed golden chance with the header and a couple more chances that she's been unable to take as well. Just unfortunate as Farquhar Harson there was tripped. Into the hundredth minute. But it's still 3 0. McFarlane is going to take charge of taking duties for this one then after Fakwa Harson slip. It's a good ball in as well. The goalkeeper came but didn't get there. Hit it back in there. The goalkeeper again came but never got to it. It's taken out of her hands. It's certainly the second time of asking. Just wonder whether there was a call there for the goalkeeper or not. If there wasn't, then it's probably fair for the defender to just take charge. But I think if the goalkeeper is going to come for that, shouts for it. Sometimes it's best to just leave it for the goalkeeper as it would have there relieved the pressure on the defence had she been able to collect. But the referee there calls time. And in the end, it's 100 minutes played. And three goals across all of them. In the second half, all of them came. Tate Schiefer with the opening goal. 
and Leah Mitchell then followed that up with a brace. And it means here at full time St. Joseph's College are victorious in the ESFA Under-18 Women's Super League Final. St. Joseph's College will celebrate. Commiserations to Sandwell. Do stick around for the trophy presentations. But it finishes here in the final. Sandwell College nil, St. Joseph's College three. Well, congratulations then to St. Joseph's College as they hear a victorious champions of the English Schools FA Under-18s Women's Super League competition. Commiserations, of course, as well to Sandwell. We'll set for the trophy presentation here at full time. Earlier in the half, we asked you to vote for your player of the match over on Twitter. And here we will see the winning nominee presented with their individual player of the match trophy Leah Mitchell the player of the match with a brace in that second half and she's there congratulated and will step forward to take the trophy for the Player of the Match award. Trophy presentation there being made to Leah Mitchell. Her goals came at crucial points in that second period. 
But it wasn't just the goals, was it? She was a star performer from start to finish, even in that first half in midfield. Next now, the match officials will step forward to receive their medals as well. The referee, Josh Smith, his assistants, Ian McGuinness and Max Underwood, and the fourth official, Dean Whitestone. All come forward here to take their medals. The first of two national finals then in the under-18 Super League competition complete here today at Stoke City, still to come the men's final. But now it is the turn of the runners-up and commiserations once again to Sanwell College. It's of course not the result that Sanwell were looking for today and the manner in which they went down in defeat. 3-0 will be disappointing as well in the second half. After that first goal went in, they just had to give it their all. Give it their all, they did. Certainly can't be any questions asked about the effort that they put in today. They gave it everything from start to finish, but just wasn't to be across the course of the match in its entirety. Hopefully, though, when the Sanwell players here look back on things, they can still be proud of the achievement in even reaching the final. It's a brilliant display from them. They finished second in the group, of course, and then going on to beat Hartford College in the knockout round, but maybe just one step too far for them here today in the final up against such a quality side in St Joseph's. Obviously so much quality throughout the Sanwell team as well, and good to see Abby Borton there work walking again as well after she was out off the field, remember, because the last day she wasn't able to walk at all. Good to see her back walking normally. But today then it's a day for St Joseph's as each and every one of their players here step forward to take their medals. Megan Wearing forward now, who was superb at the back today. From start to finish, the player of the match, Leah Mitchell. Of course it's been mentioned how important her goals were, but every single player has played their part in this, not just today as well, but over the course of the whole season, a real team effort from start to finish and it's a reward for not just the game today but all the hard work and effort and work behind the scenes as well which has I'm sure gone in right from the very first game this season Lauren Hales. Hales comes forward now who led the line really well today as well for St Joseph's was involved in the scoring of the first Liam Mitchell goal as well with the assist and then those that began the game on the substitute bench too Sarah Bracero will see come forward in just a moment very much made an impact from the substitute bench as well big impact after her introduction round about the half hour point with good reason for such an early introduction from the substitute bench as well. She suddenly grasped her opportunity when it was given her way. Lila James and last but not least Kelsey Morgan to come forward as well. Kelsey Morgan there, of course, not involved in the game today, but named amongst the substitutes. Good to see the support as well for Morgan out injured today. St Joseph's then will have the opportunity to lift the trophy. This is the moment that they've been waiting for. Emily Bates poses with the trophy for some after-match photos. But cue the St Joseph's celebrations. The champions of the English Schools FA Under-18 Women's Super League competition. St Joseph's College take home the trophy. Commiserations once again to Sandwell. I'm sure the celebrations will continue for St Joseph's and very much worthy of them as well. A superb second half display and ultimately in the end very worthy winners as they run out 3-0 victors here in the final. Remember we still have the under 18 men's Super League final to bring to you. 3 o'clock is the kickoff time for that one.
as Harris, as Harris City Academy Crystal Palace face off with Bishop Burton College. But here, the champions, it's St. Joseph's College. Joel by Paige, the uh, manager of St. Joseph's College. Uh, Paige, we've just seen your girls uh, win a national final here at Stoke City. Just tell me how you're feeling. Oh, I'm so proud of these lot. Like, if I could take a group of girls across the whole season that we have to achieve what we have today, like, it's just been incredible. I'm so proud of all of them. And just talk me through a little bit of the journey to get here today. Uh, how have the earlier rounds been? Obviously, it's a knockout. It's a group stage and a knockout tournament. How have you found the Super League? Uh, so it's been a brilliant occasion, like for us winning our league and then going through to the last 16, like it's been a challenge all the way across. Um, but to be on this stadium today and have the experience that we have, like we can only thank you guys for putting it on and we, oh, it's brilliant. It's so good. Love it. And uh, we're going. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about the game today now. Um, so you went in nil-nil at half-time. Um, what did you say to the girls at half-time? So they came out the second half, completely different team. What did you say to them at half-time? I 
think they just had to have a little bit more belief in them because as staff we did so we just said continue playing the way that you have um, and the moments that they took to get the goals that they did like so proud of Tate getting the first one and Leah Mitchell finishing it up and like the group of girls have just been so strong to keep the clean sheet as well so the messages were just believe in yourself do what you can do and we'll get what we can from the game and you mentioned Leah there Leah got put in man of the match have you got any words on her performance today? Oh, she's brilliant. Like, she's a credit. Uh, she's a first year at our college. And from that, like, I'm just proud of seeing her grow the way that she has, not only here, but also her club Ipswich Women. Perfect, Paige. And uh, you've been crowned national champions here today. Congratulations. Uh, go and enjoy it with your team. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. UCFB is the university campus of football business, with our campuses based at the iconic Wembley Stadium in London and our Etihad campus in Manchester. Once graduated from UCFB, you'll have gained the relevant skills and experience to start your career in sports. Over 90% of UCFB grads are in full-time employment within six months of graduating, and two-thirds are working in football and sport. Here at UCFB, we have graduates in some of the world's top sporting organisations. UCFB have produced multiple alumni that have worked in 19 out of the 20 Premier League clubs and 49 out of the 72 EFL clubs. Our students have access to regular guest speaker sessions where we bring in experienced names from the world of football to help and inspire students on their path to success. If you're passionate about sport and ready to kick off your career in one of the world's most exciting industries, head to ucfb.ac.uk to find out more.
Hello and welcome back, or welcome along if you're joining us for this one specifically this afternoon. It is the English Schools FA Under-18 Men's Super League Final here live from Stoke City on ESFA TV. It's Harris City Academy Crystal Palace up against Bishop Burton College. Well, let's take a look at how the two teams line up then, starting with Harris City Academy. They have Kiani, off you egg pony Shombi in goal. The rest of the starting 11 there then is Joshua Apeni, Blake Loiza, Lorenzo Duncan, Rory Edwards, who captains the side, Andre Gray, Nana Kafour, Urel Bakiri, Ben Hoggarth, Jack Lowe, and Jack Kenyon. Dan Hogan is the man in charge of Harris City today. As for their opponents then, Bishop Burton College, they start with Jonathan Dash as the starting goalkeeper. The rest of their starting lineup then, Ben Darley, Adam Stockhill, Harry Griffin, Matthew Clayton, Mason Chaffer, who is the skipper, Max Doughty, Luca Sylvia Burrich, Lewis Shalito, Oliver Harris and Billy Fincham. James Bennett is the man who will be in the technical area for Bishop Burton. Both sides with five substitutes available to be used today then. As you can see there, those on the left for Harris City Academy, Paolo Karaj, Oliver Skibinski, Kosku Ono, Israel Odufua and Mark Bafo Bonny. And for Bishop Burton, their substitutes there, Luca Gag, Jacob Hill, Isaac Archer, Kai Nicholson and Kean Skelton. Well, here come the two teams then, led out onto the field by the match officials, the referee Dean Whitehouse, his assistants Ian McGuinness and Max Underwood. And the fourth official today, by the way, is Josh Smith. It's Harris City Academy to the right of the picture there in the green and black and Bishop Burton College in the navy blue and white. Well, both of these two teams topped their groups before going on to make their way through the knockout stages. It's the build-up to the game that has been all season long for the pair of them building up to this huge occasion today here at the home of Stoke City. Harris City, they beat Millerfield School on penalties in actual fact in the semi-final and that is the only game that they haven't won in the regular 90 minutes this season. Of course, they went on to progress through that semi-final so in that sense they won that one as well. But every single other game that they've played this season, Harris City Academy, well, they've won it in 90 minutes. Bishop Burton, though, they will have other ideas in that sense today. It was a huge opening day victory in this competition this season for Bishop Burton as they won 13-0 on the opening day. They've also recorded four clean sheets in the six games that they've played en route to the final which is a very impressive defensive record. Two teams there then just posing for some photos pre-match. And we are now very nearly ready to get this one underway then. It's day six of the ESFA National Football Finals here at Stoke City. And this is a massive one of them. The under-18 men's Super League competition comes to its yearly conclusion here today. Will it be Harry City Academy Crystal Palace or Bishop Burton College who get their hands on the trophy come full time? Well, we'll have to wait and see. 90 minutes of action ahead then. And no time for extra time should the scores be level come full time. It will be straight to the dreaded penalties. The final team talking to there for Harris City Academy then. Led by Captain Rory Edwards, there's the Bishop Burton goalkeeper, Jonathan Dash. He will once again be looking to keep his net well guarded here this afternoon. Two captains there coming together with the match officials. Edwards there with the captain's armband on 
and Mason Chaffer for Bishop Burton. Edwards, the skipper for Harris City Academy. And leading the line there will be Ben Hogarth, who is going to take this first touch of the ball there by the looks of things. The kickoff here as he stands over the ball in the centre circle. are underway then the referee blows his whistle and this game gets off to its beginning long forward there for Bishop Burton and it's an early header back for Harris City Academy that's onto the right flank it's an early shooting opportunity as well there for Max Doughty managed to get the shot away it's a bright start New ball being called for there from the fourth official on the near side with that one having made its way into the stand behind the goal the Coldwell construction stand there behind the goal guarded by the Harris City Academy goalkeeper it's usually where the away fans are seated here at the home of Stoke City in their regular NFL championship games strong early challenge there it's inside the first minute that was a foul the referee just making sure he keeps a lid on things early on gives the free kick cross here to the right centre back Matthew Clayton for Bishop Burton stand longer forward as they try to switch the play there from left to right across onto this near side but wasn't quite pinpoint enough and it's out here for a throw in taken there by the left back Blake Loiser all the way back to the goalkeeper appeals for handball there but the referee's assistant was well placed well placed I should say to make that judgment but felt that there wasn't enough in that one to award the decision and free kick for handball that one will be a free kick though been a bright couple of opening minutes always had the potential to start at a high tempo high intensity we saw that one very early opportunity shooting chance for Max Doughty trying to skip inside there Kenyon but he was then held up came back off the upright there of the number 15 for Harris City who was listed as a substitute Israel Odufuwa but seems to be starting the game here Back to Lorenzo Duncan and all the way back here to the goalkeeper. Off you at Ponchombe. Sends it long up towards the halfway mark. On the turn there, the number nine, Hoggath. Trying to spread the play out there. Ben Hoggath, though, leading the line today for Harris City Academy. Backed himself a hat trick in actual fact in the quarter final victory. How he would love one of those again today here would be the stuff that dreams are made of for him I'm sure strong challenge and too strong there for the referees liking in the centre of the park just pulled up for that one Sulabaric I think it's just going to be a talking to as well from the match official nothing more by the looks of things at this early stage wasn't a well timed challenge though was it it was one which she never really looked likely to win and that was the overall outcome as well <laughs> throw in here for Harry City Academy Crystal Palace Cloyza there with the throw in Again, the left back into the penalty area. This is dangerous now. It needs dealing with, it should be. And eventually, Bishop Burton managed to clear the ball away. OK, 
Again, Loiser with the throw in. Time long forward towards the danger zone. It's hat clear though. After that bright and early start from Bishop Burton, it's Paris City Academy who have just been on the front foot since then. They're yet to create themselves a shooting chance. Up until this stage though, the referee there waving away any appeals for a foul. Disinterested in any claims for a free kick there. Back here out to Loiser. He's seen a lot of the ball in the opening five minutes. Then just played the ball with the outside of his right foot down the line, but it's back with the goalkeeper Dash who was able to clear. Now Doughty. Doughty twisting, turning, trying to advance then past Loiser. Goes behind for the game's first corner. Paris City Academy then here with some defending to do. And it's an opportunity for Bishop Burton to load the penalty area. And let's see what they've got by way of a delivery into the danger zone. Looks to me as though it's going to be a zonal defensive system here for Harris City. Each and every one of the players, I'm sure, will know their roles and responsibilities, but it's whether they can then win the header if the Bishop Burton players have perhaps got a, a run on them and try to make that run into the most dangerous positions in amongst it all. The referee just halting things for a second, but we are now ready for this corner then to be taken. It's taken short in the end by Griffin. Back to Griffin again, one off the training ground. Good header away, though. Well defended. Definitely tried to work a pre-planned set-piece routine there, Bishop Burton, but it didn't quite come off. Resultant ball into the box is allowed to run all the way through. There's still players forward from that initial corner to aim at in the centre. And the header in the end takes it out of behind for the goal kick. And that will prove to be just a moment's reset in defence for Harris City. It's a goal kick which is there taken short as Harris City looks to try to build their way out from the back and it's a foul. Lorenzo Duncan there caught. The referee with no doubt in his mind in awarding that. Here is the free kick. There was a definite intent there though for Bishop Burton to press really high. As Harris City Academy Crystal Palace tried to play their way out from the back. Loza playing in the left wing back role, isn't he? Blake Loza with the three centre backs then in the more regular defensive positions. Ends up all the way back with the goalkeeper and off the red pony Shombe sends it long. Doughty. It's been a real bright spark early on. Still Doughty, can he get the ball into a dangerous area? Well, in the end, he probably made the most of it that he could there, Max Doughty, and winning the corner again. That's been a lively opening eight minutes. And Doughty has been at the heart of much of it for Bishop Burton when they came forwards. Again, then, it will be a corner from this near side took the first of those short remember it is sometimes the first corner in which teams opt for their training routine let's see what Bishop Burton go for here it's a more regular delivery in and there's the game's first goal Bishop Burton lead a brilliant delivery from the corner and it's Max Doughty with the header just nine minutes on the clock and Bishop Burton are ahead. Doughty, who did superbly well in winning the corner to begin with, is then on the end of the delivery to turn past the goalkeeper. 
maybe a bit of an inquest in the Harris City defence as to how Doughty was allowed so much space in such a crowded penalty area. There's a free header in the end. Goalkeeper beats it. That's into the back of the empty net. Well, that makes for just the start to the game that Bishop Burton were looking for. The goalkeeper here under pressure as well. Bishop Burton getting their just rewards for the brave, adventurous, out-of-possession defensive style that we've seen from them here in the opening ten minutes. Free kick for Bishop Burton. Long into the penalty area again, it's flicked on as well, and the header goal bound drops onto the roof of the net. Wasn't far away. Forward from the back there, the captain, Mason Chaffer. Couldn't quite divert his header how he would have wanted to there, the skipper, but it was another aerial battle in the Harris City Academy penalty area, which Bishop Burton won. <laughs> Important now for Harris City that they just settle down make sure that this doesn't get doubly worse for them still so early on good header away up towards halfway over the halfway line now desperately calling for the ball back there over on the right was Joseph a penny it does go the way of a penny now runner forward down the line and a penny fed the ball up there to Bikiri as well Bikiri Gets past the first defender, the referee with a decision to make, and the decision is free kick. Just outside the penalty area. Definitely outside on second lockings, but it was a tight run thing. Really good decision from the referee because it was definitely a foul. It's always interesting, aren't they? free kicks from these sorts of areas it's a two-man wall here for Bishop Burton I always just feel that despite the acute angle these sorts of deliveries have the potential to turn into a cross come shot it's completely overhit that time though didn't get that one right at all wasteful disappointing Goalkeeper here, Dash, is going to restart then with the goal kick. Set up initially there, Bishop Burton, to maybe play it out from the back, but instead, perhaps sensibly, given the slender advantage that they have intact here early on, the goalkeeper just ushered his back line forwards and in the aftermath sent it long. Paney there with the header. Griffin, excellent work. Now ben Darley. Darley up to the goal scorer, Doughty. Dispossessed then, though, by Odefua. It's only coming back. Into the penalty area, it goes again, and the goal bound was on target. Straight down the throat to the goalkeeper that time, though, and it was a simple catch for off you at Shombi. Ball again, and Kiani off Yoke Pomchombi gets there first in the end, but it's a 
foul as the referee blows the whistle to signal for that against Shilita. to run through initially there by the skipper Chaffer but dealt with it there and the follow-up in the aftermath and it's out for a throw in it's been a really engaging interesting watch in this opening quarter of an hour Bishop Burton College one goal to the good Alfie Doughty having won the corner the man to head home then from it for both teams by the way is housed in this near side stand on the near side by the dugouts here at Stoke City this afternoon both sets of supporters trying to urge their sides on and also bellowing orders as well from the substitute bench from both sets of coaches Dan Hogan in charge of Harris City has problems to solve at this stage but James Bennett in the opposite technical area will be delighted with the start that his team have here made. Penny will again get to that one. And gets the throw in. Penny again then will take this throw and just taking his time over it perhaps which is maybe understandable he's been involved at plenty in the last couple of minutes in fairness and also just one goal down maybe just sensible for Harris City now to accept the fact that the opening 16 minutes haven't gone their way and just try to change the course of things from here change the tempo of the game maybe prior to kick off that Harris City haven't lost a single game this season haven't been subject to much adversity along the way it's a test of the mental strength for them now as well but still plenty of time left a long long way to go yet header there and the raised boot as well Harry Griffin has brought about this free kick. It's been taken relatively quickly that time by Loiza. A penny with the searching ball there over the top. The goalkeeper had a really good starting position. Judge the danger well there, Jonathan Dash. He was on hand to come out to the edge of the 18 yard box and collect. Forward again there from Dash. been a relatively good response from Harris City Academy having fallen behind so early on I think it's these sorts of just passages of play and periods of possession that will be most pleasing given the circumstances for their manager but won't be happy with a, a ball to, to gift possession back like that advantage here being played by the referee as Bishop Burton was still in possession not for long though as that header sees it back to Matthew Akpon Shombe goalkeeper has the ball once more good work there in midfield from Oliver Harris the number 10 for Bishop Burton Long diagonal hit forward that time from Dash, but offside flag there went up, which is why the free kick was awarded, but not taken from the correct position. The referee is going to ensure that it is. Bishop Burton there, perhaps 
Well, the case not to be happy because the ball was definitely moving as that free kick was taken, but the referee either didn't see it or was just keen to get on with the game. Well, he should be stationary as the ball was played. Caught the heels there of Canyon, who'd made a good run. Off the back of Shalito. Couldn't make anything of it that time. Here's Kafour. Both sides appealing for that one. As it goes out for the throw in there on this near side. Across the back line for Bishop Burton, who had been awarded that throw in. They took it relatively quickly and were keen to get the ball back in play. Bit of a heavy touch there, it looked to begin with from Sulaburic, but he was able to restore control. Referee there bringing it back for the foul. Bishop Burton College again here with the restart. 20 minutes on the clock. Max Doughty, the only goal scorer so far. And that's the narrow advantage that Bishop Burton have. Already today we saw St Joseph's College beat Sandwell College 3-0 in the women's equivalent final. Goals in that one though didn't come about until the second half when three then came in relatively quick succession. Here at least we've had a goal early on. Forward again there from a penny. Now four from the goal scorer, back to a penny though. Brought it out of the sky well and it's back again to Joseph a penny. Couldn't slip that one between the legs and it's a shooting opportunity but it's allowed to trickle wide would have taken something special to beat the Harris City Academy Chris Pikes goalkeeper from that sort of distance City in their knockout games have won 4-2 twice, then 4-1, and then got through their semi-final on penalties, as I mentioned earlier. So they have conceded in every single knockout game. In fact, they've only kept a clean sheet once in the entire competition this season. So they are used to conceding goals in that sense, but they're used to scoring plenty of them themselves as well. 24, in actual fact, they've scored on route to the final. Forward there by Kafour, good challenge, a really good tackle. Likewise, though, to get to the ball, then the slide from Loiser, it's a good ball in as well. And the header in the end drops just wide from Ben Hoggerth. Just had to jump and stretch for that one, trying to use all his neck muscles to get it on target there. Hoggerth, but in the end, wasn't able to. It's a good sign, that though for Harris City Academy. The first real warning sign. Out the back there for Bishop Burton. Fincham there was just bundled off the field of play but actually it was able to keep the ball in play despite that giving away their centre field and it's a full bloody challenge for the ball Clayton Back to Dash and leading the press there. 
for Harris City was Annika Four, but he was isolated in that press and ultimately needed some support. Ball in behind there, the goalkeeper came a long way for it, but with good reason to. Did his job well. a loose touch which nearly presented the ball to Harris but ultimately again there it was Harris City who got away with it Oliver Harris not to be confused with his namesake of the opposition Loiser good spell of possession this for Harris City Kafour Stands up the defender, looks to go 1v1 into the penalty area. Referee gives the corner. Bishop Burton pleading the case that that took a double deflection on its way through, but the biggest concern here is for Kafour, who has stayed down at least momentarily. Bishop Burton set it to defend. Four, I think, has rejected the offer of treatment, so we will restart then here with the corner. Kafour back to his feet, which is good to see. Still moving gingerly, though. Looks to be a similar style defensive setup here, though, for Bishop Burton, also with their zonal defence. Again, here, first corner taken short, the back heel. Didn't quite come off, and I just wonder whether there was a need for that to be played as a back heel from Israel Odafu, or whether he could have just played it as a, as a regular simple pass to Blake Loiser, who either way had space. Inquisitive, but perhaps just too intricate in the end. Twenty-six minutes played, the first quarter flew by, didn't it? <laughs> Three felt that there was enough in that for the foul, despite the fact that Jack Lowe never actually ended up down. Nowadays, a lot of referees wouldn't give a foul if the player doesn't end up down on the ground, but wasn't afraid to there, the referee Dean Whitestone. Moyes at that time couldn't prevent it from crossing the line. It's out here for the Bishop Burton College throw. -in. Shilito to get on his spike after. Goalkeeper again out of his penalty area. Maybe just asking the question of his defence there, though. Kiani off your Ponchombi as to whether they could have dealt with it for him. A definite difference now, though, in the lines of engagement for the two the two sides out there as Harris City Academy just dropping deeper and affording Bishop Burton College the space in possession inside their own third times half as well of the field when they have possession but it's Harris City Academy here with it back and in fairness Harris City have probably just shaded the possession as well albeit a lot of the possession has been in these sorts of areas but what that does do is drag defenders towards them and leave space then here in behind to exploit Kafour. Into the danger zone, but the header goes back to the goalkeeper. It proved to be a, proved to be more of a back pass style header, really, didn't it, than a shot on target. Over the head there of Billy Fincham. 
Fincham did get a touch to it, and Fincham here has it again. A couple of options to his right in the centre, if he can find either of them. Fincham forced wide there by a penny. But Fincham does win the corner. Bishop Burton having had a couple of corners from this near side. Will now have the opportunity to, to deliver then from over on that far left wing. Corner, of course, the route to the opening goal, the only goal of the game so far in this opening half an hour. Let's see then if this one will prove to be just as fruitful. Or can Harris City defend this one much better? Again, the goalkeeper surrounded. Goal scorer Doughty is once again in amongst it all in the centre. Looks as though it's going to be a, a right-footed delivery. You'd expect that to be an in-swinger. It is indeed towards Doughty again, but the goalkeeper came and got two strong fists to it. And in doing so, might have kick-started the counter-attack as well. Out into this near side, but it's smashed out of play. Slammed into the stand on this near side there by Adam Stockhill. Safety first, style defending. Who can blame him? Cafal clips that one into the penalty area, but just came off the knee there of Hoggarth. Sees the offside flag raised by the assistant referee over on the far side. And we'll restart then here with the free kick. Has been a closely fought game. Two teams do look well matched. Bishop Burton will feel that they're worthy of their one goal advantage, but it's only a very slender advantage in that. It certainly hasn't been one sided at all. Which is what, as a neutral, it's always good to see on such an occasion like this here today in this final here at Stoke City. Hoggarth. Harris there dispossessed by a brilliant challenge from McKeary. Trying to clip that one forward there, Kafour, but couldn't get it past the head of the defender. One ricochets high up into the air, it's a bouncy ball, Hoggoth after it. The offside flag again, he's raised. Just for a split second. It might have been a nervy moment for Bishop Burton. Holding the line well though by the looks of things then after... Well, it's a few times now that that offside flag has gone up over on the far side. ahead of him. An option to the left here as well, which is utilised now. It's a long range strike, which is deflected there. The effort from Jack Lowe. Bounces through the kindly in the end to dash. Bishop Burton, remember, having kept four clean sheets. En route to the final here today. Well, if they can compete, if they can repeat the trick, I should say. Then they'll get their hands on the trophy at full time, but very much I'm sure they'll be aware as well up against a much stronger opposition today than they have been in many of the previous games. Certainly something that they can take confidence from though. The Bishop Burton defence.
stroke header there, but it's only back against Joseph Apenny. Apenny then fouled. Harris City Academy get the free kick. No changes as of yet from the substitute bench. I say that because, of course, it's roll on, roll off changes. Substitute, so both managers able to make as many switches as they like. Having some games seen early first half changes. Oh, that's a hefty challenge. And again, referee says penalty. Well, the first tackle was superb, the second, not so much. Mason Chaffer, the skipper. The man to commit the foul and give away the penalty, which here presents the opportunity for a Harris City Academy equaliser. Got to the ball to begin with, but absolutely no questions about the second challenge. Maybe just a rush of blood to the head after the initial tackle which on second viewings was potentially dubious as well, but the referee had let it go to begin with. Loiser has stayed down for the time being. Let's take a look again then. I'm not convinced he got to the ball to begin with, but it's all irrelevant. It's a definite foul on the second occasion. The yellow card there has not been shown to Chaffer, so he's escaped any further punishment in that regard, but it's probably going to hurt him enough the fact that this penalty has here been conceded and it's down now then to his goalkeeper Jonathan Dash to save the situation and for Harris City Academy Crystal Palace we await to see who will take the spot kick Loiser back to his feet and heading towards the referee as well I wonder whether it will be Loiser to take And the goalkeeper dash then come up big here with the penalty spot it is Blake Loiser here taking on the responsibility from 12 yards can Loiser get the job done Loiser into the postage stamp of the top corner a superbly executed spot kick and Harry City Academy are back square. What an incredible penalty. Absolutely no stopping that. One apiece. Would have beaten any goalkeeper. No nerve. From the penalty spot, Loiser, who won the penalty, scores the penalty. And in some fashion as well, in off the post. Well, we've seen a few penalty shootouts here this week and last in the English Schools FA Finals, but that tops them all. What a spot kick that was. 1-1. One, one. We're back level. Which way will the pendulum here swing next? that it was a, a mental challenge for Harris City Academy to respond to the adversity of going behind early on. That's exactly what they've done. OK, they perhaps didn't create too many goal-scoring opportunities prior to that, but it only takes the one moment, and when that one moment came about, well, Loiser took it in style. Now, the same question really is posed to the Bishop Burton team. Their clean sheet out of the window. How do they now here respond moving forward? on the cover there but it's a miscued clearance and that could prove to be problematic in the end it's a let off given that the touch in the end was poor Doubted the man 
who had the opportunity presented almost on a plate for him. Was able to bring it down though. It was a miscute clearance though, wasn't it, from Andre Gray there at the back for Harris City Academy. Got away with that. Forward from Kafour. Kafour there made the run inside as a potential option for the return ball back to him, but it never came his way. Drops here in midfield for Bikiri. And Kafour out onto this near side, low. Into the centre there for Hoggarth, but just lost his footing at the crucial moment. Eventually Bishop Burton College managed to clear. And now maybe they'll look to come forward into the Harris City Academy half themselves. They get a throw in. As you can see the conditions, the rain pouring down here this afternoon here in Stoke. Didn't prove to be a factor though, did it for the penalty? Noiser there, the man who scored it with the touch there back to Gray to begin with and then it's eventually forward here now to Low. Skips past the first challenge of Darley. Into the final four minutes of regular time in this first half. Is there another goal left in it? Good ball there up and the shooting opportunity. It will be a corner. Always looked as though it was heading off target, but the strike from the left boot of Harry Griffin does bring about this corner set piece then. It is absolutely pouring down. Griffin across then here to take again in swinging delivery dealt with that time by Hoggath at the near post back out to Griffin who was the initial corner taker but backtracking there from an offside position that's why the flag went up touch there but Hoggath in close attendance still Bishop Burton have it coming forward here with Harris and it's onto the left flank Harris wanted that one back but still it will go into the centre and what has it got there and he's on his bike forward again here likewise the man with the ball at his feet Nana Kafour Kafour trying to just employ the chop there to away from the first defender but couldn't and in the end it's Kafour who's penalised for the foul still pleading his case there to the referee but did look to be a foul in the aftermath after Kafour was dispossessed and Kafour there just being pushed away by the Bishop Burton captain Chaffer who probably understandably still frustrated having conceded that spot kick which Bishop Burton were made to pay for Taken down well there to begin with by Aurel Bakiri. Number eight there for Harrow City Academy and Bakiri with the final touch. We wait to see how much stoppage time we will have at the end of this first half. Haven't been too many stoppages at all. By the two goal celebrations, we haven't had the trainers, physios on to play. at that time two goal scorers in battle there it's advantage played by the referee Harris into the penalty area referee gives the goal kick just crowded out wasn't he Oliver Harris 
In the end, wasn't able to find a cutback. Just wonder whether there's one more opportunity left in this before the midway point. If there is, then it's going to have to come quickly. Else we'll be heading into half time at one apiece, and that probably a fair reflection, I would say, of this first half. Penny again strong in his defending. Forward from Duncan, and the referee blows the half time whistle. No time for any stoppage time then at the end of this first period. And it is all square, heading into the midway point. One apiece here at the home of Stoke City. Bishop Burton got the opening goal, the header from the corner. Max Doughty, the scorer, having won the corner himself after just nine minutes. And that set things alight for Bishop Burton. But when they then conceded the penalty, Blake Loiser with a splendid finish as we'll leave you here with the half-time highlights. But at the midway point, it's Harris City Academy Crystal Palace 1, Bishop Burton College 1. UCFB is the university campus of football business, with our campuses based at the iconic Wembley Stadium in London and our Etihad campus in Manchester. Once graduated from UCFB, you'll have gained the relevant skills and experience to start your career in sports. Over 90% of UCFB grads are in full-time employment within six months of graduating, and two-thirds are working in football and sport. Here at UCFB, we have graduates in some of the world's top sporting organisations. UCFB have produced multiple alumni that have worked in 19 out of the 20 Premier League clubs and 49 out of the 72 EFL clubs. Our students have access to regular guest speaker sessions where we bring in experienced names from the world of football to help and inspire students on their path to success. If you're passionate about sport and ready to kick off your career in one of the world's most exciting industries, head to ucfb.ac.uk to find out more.
Welcome back then for the second half here at Stoke City Football Club. The second half of the ESFA Under-18 Men's Super League Final. It's 1-1 at half-time here between Harris City Academy Crystal Palace and Bishop Burton College. And it was the latter who got themselves ahead after just nine minutes when Doughty, Max Doughty, got the opening goal, the header from the corner. But ultimately, it was Blake Loyza's penalty which brought Harris City Academy back level. And that's how we stand then here at this juncture at the midway point. Still 45 minutes of action to bring to you. And if it was anything like the first half, then it promises to be a very entertaining second period as well. It's a really good watch in that first 45. Hopefully we'll have more of the same in this second half. Just a reminder as well that if it is level, come full time, then it will be straight to penalties to decide the winner here. No extra time period. So just the 45 minutes which lie ahead. And then, if need be, spot kicks. And, well, we've already seen the execution of a perfectly placed spot kick. And that's no exaggeration either from Blake Loiser in that first half. Here come the Harris City Academy Crystal Palace players then. Words of encouragement and advice of improvement as well, I'm sure, at half-time from their boss, Dan Hogan. And likewise, I'm sure, from Jens Bennett in the Bishop Burton College change room at half-time as well. Both of those managers just trying to inspire and bring about an improvement in the performance levels in the second half, I'm sure. Harris City actually beat last year's finalists, London Nautical School, who I remember playing here last year in the group phase of the competition. Similarly for Bishop Burton, they knocked out previous finalist Park View in the round of 16 knockout phase of the competition. So as I said in the first half, it has been an extensive campaign for the pair of them in reaching this stage. It's an achievement in itself to even reach the final, but that has now already been completed. Both sides know that the minimum that they can go away with today is the runners-up medals, but that's not what either of them want, of course. As we get underway again here at Stoke City for this second half. Adafua there, the number 15 forward for Harris City. It's cut back behind him then by Kenyon. Hogarth was closest to it, but Bishop Burton managed to clear their lines. It's a loose pass there, uncharacteristic really. For Harris City at the back, but it's all the way back there with the goalkeeper. And he went long that time. The majority of occasions in the first half, Harris City looked to try to maintain possession, even if that was inside their own half and then play forward through the lines from there. It's a good header there from Andre Gray. Hooked away. Bounced away from Penny to, be, Penny to begin with. And Penny there in the aftermath with the ball forward, but it's only straight there to the number 16, Harry Griffin. Griffin. Good ball through first time as well to Harris, but in the end, Harris could only blaze the effort there off target, high and wide. It was a nice pass though, wasn't it, from Griffin in slipping that one through for his teammates. First opportunity in this second period has come and gone the way of Bishop Burton College. thought the referee kept a little on things well in that first half. No yellow cards necessary as well. Which is always what we want to see in the first half of a game. And I think referees want to see that as well, in, in honesty. Because, especially in a cup final, they won't want to be getting the cards out. And this is absolutely necessary. But, of course, still the potential for the temperature of the game, so to speak. To just creep up a, a notch or two as the game progresses. Just because of... So much being at stake here 
this afternoon. It is quite literally all on the line. Really good cross-field ball there to switch the play. Intercepted then, though, by a penny. He got back at it as well at the second time of asking, then was fouled. He's been superb so far for Harris City. there and did to the number nine Hoggath back across to a dangerous area but nobody there in green still the rain continues to pour Bishop Burton's turn that time to be allowed the time and space to bring that one forward. Maybe just a, a slight change in the intensity at which Harris City Academy are, are looking, or, or not so much in the second half, looking to press completely high up the field. Oh, nice play. Sulavorich to skip away from the first challenge and still Bishop Burton here with the ball and it was another good example of it there with Harris City momentarily just ending up with every single player back inside their own half whilst Bishop Burton still had three across the back line inside their own half of the field just going to, to illustrate the point made earlier The header on, Hoggath closest to it, it's turned back to the goalkeeper. Composed at the back there was Clayton. Taken down superbly well, then trying to just turn the Harris City Academy defence and make them face up their own goal. here being left by a penny this time it's going to be taken instead by the right centre back who has come across to take charge of it it's taken by Lorenzo Duncan but it's only coming back and now it's out in a similar position for this Bishop Burton throw it five minutes played since the second half restart we're still as we were at half time on the scoreboard half chances at either end but nothing clear cut since the resumption. Oliver Harris. Back again here to Harris, progressing well here for Bishop Burton. Good ball in as well. The header in the end is going to be collected by Sabulorich. It was meant as an effort on goal, I think, to begin with, but it proved to be more of a flick on in the end. Still the pressure continues to mount, but in the end maybe just ran out of patience there and it was a speculative long-range strike to say the least. Since the opportunity to shoot there, Jaffa looking to try to make amends for his error to concede the penalty in the first half, but he wasn't able to test the goalkeeper there. allowed to bounce which is sometimes problematic to the goalkeeper on his less favoured left foot but managed to deal with it well enough there dash and it's uncharacteristic really of a penny to produce a loose touch like that no half time changes by the way so both sides still with their 11s that began the game out there on the field Griffin, 
broke through the first challenge, but was then held up by a penny. Went sliding in and timed that challenge to perfection. Oh, header there, and well, I just wonder whether it was an arm used by Hoggarth in, in leading with his arm in that challenge. It's left Clayton down here. I'm surprised the referee hasn't gone to, to check on the well-being of Clayton before seeing to the defender there, Ben Hoggarth. The referee will now go across to see Matthew Clayton. Especially given that it's a, a head injury. Obviously, all necessary precautions are usually taken instantaneously straight away, and that's the way it always should be, but slightly surprised there, to say the least, that the referee was more keen to, to speak to Hoggarth rather than check on the well-being of Clayton, but he's, he's back up now, which is good to see. Hoggarth did there escape any further punishment, by the way. It was deemed to just be a, an honest challenge for the ball. I don't think he was trying to, to lead with his army, even if he did. Hoggarth here after it again, and it's a battle again, and battle that time won by Chaffer. Odafuwa had a little flurry on this near right flank in the second half as it is for Harris City right at the beginning of the second period Odafuwa but back in his more central role now that one ricochets through back to Ofiwak Pranshombe and Kiani Ofiwak Pranshombe now has the ball in his hands Harris. Loose pass. Nearly ten minutes played since we got going again, and I think Bishop Burton will feel that they've certainly edged things in that time frame. It's about what happens from here on forwards, though. Hoggarth uh, perhaps reluctant to jump for the challenge as intensely has, as he perhaps was doing before after the referees talking to with the previous challenge. Loiser. Low. Back to Loiser. spread of play there from the goalkeeper out to a penny but he lost his footing good recovery again though I'm sure for a moment the eyes would have lit up there for Oliver Harris but nothing came of it for Bishop Burton in the end away there from Jack Lowe trying to utilize the space over on the far right wing there and there was space for Bishop Burton but only momentarily and the pass wasn't quite on point anyway Penny there forward to Jack Kenyon here. Good play as well from Kenyon in driving inside to begin with and then spreading the play out over onto that left flank. And Kenyon continued his run and is on the receiving end of the pass then too. Wins the free kick. Brilliant play from Jack Kenyon in first just relieving the defensive pressure and then turning it into a bit of a attacking threat down the other end as well. then to take it's an in-swinging delivery it was right on that six-yard line it's an audacious effort to get it sent back in there headed out and Bishop Burton here can spring a counter-attack and with plenty of bodies forward as well here Doughty the goal scorer back across it's Harris but it was really well defended a really good recovery 
to salvage the situation for Harris City Academy. Lovely footwork as well there from Nanaka for It was 3v1 momentarily there in attack for Bishop Burton. And coming forward again, Shalito. Might open up here for the shooting chance. It's always going wide though in the end from the right boot of Griffin. Dowdy didn't get much wrong at all. Got his head up, tried to pick out a teammate. Oh, nearly found the path there of Harris. And there is going to be a change here then. It's the first introduction. And the first change which we'll see Jacob Hill here come on for Bishop Burton. I believe it was Luka Solberic who was replaced there. It's definitely Jacob Hill who here has come on. Indeed it was Sulubaric who has been withdrawn. And it looks to be a like-for-like -like change with Hill going on to replace him in midfield. Up to Harris. Harris here to the substitute. Hill happy to set that one back. The delivery will now come into the box. Harris on the end of it, still there as well. And the flag there goes up from over on the far side. Offside, I think, is the decision, yeah, that was given in the end. It's basically a goal kick, though, as it's taken there, and the referee just had to get out of the way of that. his way as well but Hill freshly on got there first might open up for the through ball here but it wasn't quite executed how Harris City wanted it to be Always interesting in a game like this, isn't it? Because, of course, every moment is of high importance in a in a national final like this from the very first second. But as the game continues into its final half an hour here, just that importance level seems to be amplified. Maybe that will be the sense that the players fail out on the pitch as well, and then it's that risk versus re reward aspect to the game, and how much the two teams want to throw at it in way of trying to push players forward to try and get the goal to win it or get the goal to, to go ahead there's still time for multiple goals of course but how much do they want to, to risk in that sense versus how much do they want to try to just preserve the position that they find themselves in and the team on the losing side, losing side of the scoreboard Shombe there thought about taking that one but then maybe thought better of it and just allowed for his defence to step up before doing so out jump there was Odafua to begin with Hill trying to make an impact from the substitute's bench but nothing coming for him that time despite the appeals up to Hoggarth it's turned away there by Clayton. Back for the throw in. Coaching staff and members of the substitute bench on the near side certainly felt that that was a foul, but referee felt otherwise. And there's a substitution here then. And it's going to be a first change for Harris City Academy. 
being introduced there is Mark Boffo Bonney. So Boffo Bonney, he had the player to come on, and well, Dan Hogan, the Harrow City Academy Crystal Palace boss, will be hoping that he can be the player to provide the much needed spark to just reignite the engine in this second period now moving forward. Bikiri. Here back to Buffo Bonnie. Buffo Bonnie just lost his footing though. Not the first touch that he wanted. Swept out there by Andre Gray. Kafour. Buffo Bonnie battling for it, making a nuisance of himself. Oh, it's just about dealt with at the back there by Gray. And we saw miscue a clearance in the first half. That was a difficult ball to deal with, in fairness, but, well, got the job done. Despite it being not particularly convincing, that was the case. Forward there from Baffo Bonny. Hunger pie into the penalty area. It runs all the way through. Now with Lowe. Lowe's a pleasing, pleading for it on the edge of the penalty area and still asking the question as to why it didn't come his way there. Lowe chose to take the opportunity on alone. Confirmation of that latest change, by the way, it's Jack Kenyon who has been replaced by boss Dan Hogan to make way for Baffo Bonnie. Defence there after it now is Doughty. It's still Doughty. Well, he was played on side to begin with by his opposite goal scorer, Loiser. That just allowed for the space there for Doughty to just find that pocket in behind. Loiser in the end maybe just did enough to put Doughty off, and it was an acute angle in the end to try to get the strike in. It was a rare occasion though in which the Harris City Academy back line. Hasn't been held to perfection there. I think Loiza was five or so yards in behind the rest of his fellow defenders. Harris after it. Well dealt with though by Gray. It's cleared away too. Twenty-five minutes plus stoppage time to play. Still all square. Gray. Maybe he wanted his goalkeeper to come for that. He didn't. It's still there. Good save. Off you Akpo Shompe with the stop to begin with. And then it's slashed high and wide by Billy Fincham. Do just wonder whether the goalkeeper could have come to collect in the first instance. But certainly if there was any fault to his name in not coming for that, then he certainly made amends for it. With the save in the aftermath. Really tenacious play by Harris to get there first and Max Doughty denied his second it's a first proper save that I think I can remember either goalkeeper making testament to the simplicity of the stops that they have otherwise had to make perhaps but in terms of a high quality stop I think that's the best that we've seen also goes to illustrate the fact that the majority of the game has probably been played in the, the midfield third, away from both nets, especially in this second half. Comes back really to that risk against reward element that I was mentioning earlier. For Bonnie there with the ball up, Kafour closest to it there for Harris City. Taken down there by Harris, but it only broke back through the opposition.
substitute Hill there with the ball. Across onto this near side for Stockhill to chase after, but it was well seen behind there by Bafo Bonny, who was back doing his defensive duties. Track the left back all the way there and improvised in the end in playing the back heel off Stockhill to and get the goal kick. There's going to be a double switch hit for Bishop Burton. Luca Gag for number 12 and Isaac Archer number 15. All the players coming on here. One of those being replaced there is Luis Chilito. So it's a double change to add to the earlier introduction of Jacob Hill. And he now is joined by Luca Gag and Isaac Archer on the field from the bench as well. Very nearly gave the ball away there, didn't they, from the restart, but managed to salvage the situation. Might have been a bit of a hearts in mouths moment, though. Swept forward there, looking for a substitute, but never quite came his way. If you act on Sean, be happy to set it for the goal kick rather than trying to keep the ball in play. Again, here, Harrow City Academy set up with the centre back split on the six yard line and then play it much further upfield. Loiser. Kafour couldn't quite there find the run of Akiri after it in behind Doughty but the offside flag is raised much to the bemusement there of Max Doughty who pleading his case that he felt he was onside linesman though the referee's assistant on the far side felt otherwise Gray happy to go back to his goalkeeper. A penny here, the obvious option on the near side, but that passing line was cut off, and well, it came back off the striker. The substitute, Isaac Archer, with the inverted touch. It could have ended up anywhere, and that's such a lucky moment, really, for Harris City Academy. One which they definitely get away with. Couldn't there find the run of Bakiri. Doing so, he's only presented the ball back there to Griffin. Up to Archer. Archer's come out of that challenge holding his calf, which is a concern there for Bishop Burton, having only just been introduced, but looks as though he'll try to, to soldier on. Moses throw it. Seen out now for a throw in a similar position here. This time though for Bishop Burton. All eyes still feasted on this one. It's Paris City Academy there look to try to break forward, but was a bit of a heavy touch from Baffo Bonnie and maybe just a sign of the frustration in the aftermath in the foul there which he then conceded different foul just caught Griffin set back there for Archer Trying to, to link the play, perhaps that was part of the message from the coaching team. Be a focal point of attack for us out there and then try to bring others into play in support of you. Quite possibly at this stage, 
something which the Bishop Burton College coaching team would want to try to think about their game in a way in which perhaps we haven't seen too much up until this stage. We've seen Ben Hoggath lead the line in a, in a similar way for Harris City Academy. Hoggath's involvement, though, in fairness, has become increasingly few and far between, but he's in the centre here. Loser. Matches onto the end of it. Nice cutback as well. And it's goal bound. We're asking for a corner, and we're going to get it as well. Took a deflection on its way through again. It was Lozer involved at the heart of it. And the touch, I think, there came off. The defender. It was the skipper, wasn't it? Mason Chaffer. Still work to be done, though, until this passage of pressure passes by for the Bishop Burton defence. They themselves, of course, scored a header from a corner at this end of the field. On this side of the field, can they here defend the delivery? Loser. Yes, they can. Those are the best of balls into the box. Chomby there just lost his footing as he sent that one forwards. Stockhill will see it back to the goalkeeper. Calm. And it's certainly a time for calm, isn't it? Now, the more calm heads that these two teams get out there, then probably the better. Low. Temple catch for Dash. drive forward wasn't it from Jack Lowe but not quite the accuracy of the shot that he was looking for it was on target made the goalkeeper make the save but it was always a comfortable one for the Bishop Burton shot stop it foul and can blew the whistle for the free kick we're into the final quarter of an hour now Harris with the flick forward but it's turned back there by Kafour cross into the penalty area looks a good one Archer was close to it it was really well defended Joseph Apani Absolutely superb last ditch defending there from the covering fullback who got back into a central position and when it was needed of him most he managed to get the header away brilliantly well done chase on for it here and it's a chase which Harris City have made the most of Hoggoth in the centre it's across to Hoggoth now Hoggoth just trying to turn to work the shooting opportunity but Hoggoth then was dispossessed it is back with his team now though a penny Duncan penny forward first time been so impressed with Joseph and Penny's overall display today for Harris City Academy Again, back to the goalkeeper. Oh, the goalkeeper there under pressure. And still. And the referee is going to call a halt to proceedings. 
went flying into the challenge and again the goalkeeper gets away with it it's just a couple of occasions now but off you act on Shombi can count himself a very lucky boy for it was a foul on the goalkeeper in the end but it was an element of fortune certainly about the fact that it ended up that way rather than having given the ball away a penny there and stayed down for the time being substitution here being made for Harris City Academy then it's Ben Hoggath here being replaced by Jack Kenyon who is reintroduced started the game remember and Hoggath now off Penny being held back to his feet there. I believe there was a change in there as well for Bishop Burton. Try and get that confirmed as, as soon as possible. I think it's Lucas Solubaric who has come back on. A penny there winning the corner. me an opportunity to point you in the direction of the ESFA Twitter page at Schools Football to take part in the player of the match vote for this one there's four nominees for the player of the match Joseph Penny and Blake Loyes are the man who's going to here take the corner the scorer of the Harris City Academy Crystal Palace goal are the nominations from the Harris City side as Loiser here takes the corner into the centre runs all the way through and what a save that is that's a brilliant stop from Jonathan Dash went flying across the face of goal and Bishop Burton have their goalkeeper to thank definitely worth another look but full stretch there the shot stopper and it was Oda Fuwa who was there denied the nominations for the player of the match by the way for Bishop Burton just quickly Max Doughty and Harry Griffin that swung in but doesn't get past the first defender as Darley was able to clear so make sure you go over to at Schools Football then on Twitter to take part in the player of the match vote but there's still 10 minutes to play and so much could still change the player of the match by the way will be presented with their play with that trophy and the trophy presentation at full time so do stick around for the trophy presentation on which we'll see our winners crowned on the pitch after the full time whistle also hoping to hear from the winning manager as well at full time still waits to see we wait to see which winning boss that will turn out to be though Bafo Bonnie out here to a penny swung in but the goalkeeper is always going to be able to catch that one it's a much more simple take for him from the boot of Israel Odafur as it was on the previous occasion as Odafur was denied from that corner has to be up there with the best saves that we've seen here in the school's finals this year so far definitely perhaps even past that as well it was a brilliant stop risky and very nearly gave the ball straight away there to Kafour. Had Kafour been able to bounce on that then well he would have had a whole host of space to advance into. Needs to get back though now Nana Kafour. On the turn here Archer it's still there as well and they've scored! Bishop Burton have their lead back and cue the jubilation the celebration Bishop Burton are back ahead, 2-1, we have just over seven minutes left on the clock. Unbelievable scenes.
great work from Archer to begin with. And Harry Griffin with the finish. And just look at what it means to them. Harris City have had bodies on the line this second half, but it wasn't enough to keep that effort out. Right into the top corner. Nothing that the goalkeeper could do. Now Harris City need to respond. Up for the play of the match is Harry Griffin. And well, I think he's just done his chances of scooping that award. A whole lot of good. Has been such an influential player in midfield today for Bishop Burton. You have to feel that he's worthy of his goal. Substitution here then for Bishop Burton as well, which is going to see Max Doughty replaced there by Lewis Shimito, who is back on, and also a change which is going to see the reintroduction of Ben Hoggerf, the number nine for Harris City Academy, and with good reason as well here, as they need to get the attacking players back on. And I believe it's Joseph Penny who has there been replaced, he has. Still time for Harris City Academy here to make amends. But it's Bishop Burton who are here in pole position. Hopeful long clearance away. Of the halfway line and the aerial battle is on again. Great flick on from Archer. He was involved in the making of the goal, there's a coming together there as well, and the decision in the end goes against Bishop Burton and in favour of Harris City. And again, likewise, there for the challenge on Bakiri. He's played every minute of this one so far, Bakiri. A couple of players having dropped in and out of the occasion. Of course, with Jack Kenyon having started and now back on. Ben Hoggarth likewise as well. Referee disinterested in the appeals for a foul that time. Would have been three in quick succession, but wasn't the case. Archer here still in the centre. Just about had enough on to go out behind. Don't really think at this stage there's much to justify a hugely substantial period of stoppage time either, which is of concern as well for Harris City. We, of course, will wait to see how much stoppage time we will have at the end of the 90 and well there's a stoppage here right on cue as it's just a, an issue of cramp here and standing physio Israel Odafua is doing his job trying to help his teammate back to his feet and Harris City will restart but haven't been extended stoppages in the second half have they which from a Bishop Burton College perspective it's going to be pleasing if they do see a, a relatively low number go up on the Fourth official substitution board come 90 minute mark. I'm sure they will do everything they can to see this game out over the line. Harris City Academy, remember. Undefeated. In fact, they've won every single game. If you count for the penalties they got through in the semi-final as well but they're behind here and in their biggest game of the season so far as well
flick on there from Hargath. It's taken down by Baffa Bonnie. Low. Curls out and behind and onto the roof of the net. Time is running out for Harris City. They're going to have to be quick about it. But they need the ball back in play and they need the ball back. from the goalkeeper it's allowed to bounce out though here on this near side Duncan all the way across here to Gray we're into the final minutes of the 90 Goalkeeper out of his penalty area, involved in the in possession play again. Loiser. Can't the need though to go back to the goalkeeper. How City have gone about the game with the ball at their feet in their own half patiently for the large majority of it. But they need to change tactic, you know, sense. They need to get the ball forwards. There is a sense of urgency. But will it bring about one late opportunity? Marcia might have felt that the offside flag was going to go up there anyway. But it bounced back through again. Two off you act from Sean Bay. The Three minutes is all that goes up. And the fourth official substitution board has an indication of the stoppage time. And not surprisingly either. I think that's probably fair in truth. I'm sure if you're a supporter of Harry City, then you feel that there perhaps should have been more, but Bishop Burton, I think, will take that. Two and a half minutes away, Bishop Burton, from getting their hands on the trophy and here getting the job done. They still have defending to do. Have the ball at the moment though. And that's exactly what they want to be the case. Archer. He's made an impact as well, not with the pass that time that he wanted, but it's the kind of area where they definitely want the ball. Definitely has just provided something different though in the short space of time that he's been on. Here's Kafour. Good looking ball into the penalty area. Bishop Burton should be able to clear, but just for a split second there, it seemed as though it was going to drop to Hoggers. Forward from off you act on Schombeck. Is there a grandstand finale? Offside. We played half of the allotted added time. Bishop Burton very nearly there. Reigning champions of the English Colleges FA Premier League champions for Yorkshire. They're a side who have won the English Colleges FA Premier League twice in their history as well. Are they about to add the English Schools FA Under-18 Men's Super League competition? to their name as well it's a foul and it was as well I'm sure that Bishop Burton will take their time in taking it who can blame them
Taken down there by Shiletto. It's now or never for Harris City. They have to get the ball forwards. Bishop Burton coaching staff are asking the question of the fourth official. All eyes now on the referee. How much longer? No longer at all. And Bishop Burton College get through to the full-time whistle. They can celebrate and just look at what it means to them as well. Commiserations to Harris City. But today is a day for Bishop Burton. Harris City gave it all they had in that second half. Having found the equaliser with the Blake Lloyd's the penalty, who was superb throughout, by the way, from start to finish before half time. But Bishop Burton, in the end, found the decisive goal. And it was Harry Griffin on the mark for Bishop Burton to provide the winning goal. It's all over here at Stoke City. It finishes 2-1 in favour of Bishop Burton. And don't go anywhere because we've got the trophy presentation coming next. Well, congratulations then. Big, big congratulations to Bishop Burton College. 2-1 winners here in the under-18 men's Super League final. Commiserations once more to the runners-up Harris City Academy Crystal Palace. They'll have to settle for silver. But for Bishop Burton, I'm sure the celebrations will continue long gone into the evening. Had to dig in really hard for that. Harris City gave it all that they had. It's the first defeat of the season for Harris City Academy. As we move forward to the trophy presentation. Earlier in the half, we asked you to vote for the player of the match over on Twitter. We're about to find out the winner of that player of the match poll. Uh, I can tell you the player of the match uh, from Bishop Burton College number seven. 
27, Max Danton. Max Doughty, scorer of the first Bishop Burton goal, as he steps forward to take the Player of the Match award. On the right side of the scoreline, and with that individual trophy to cherish as well. To uh, Max, also, please put your hands together and show your appreciation for our match officials from this game. In the Next up Park will be the match officials, the uh, presentations uh, here, by the way. Are being made by ESFA council member Dave Wollaston. The referee, I thought, kept a lid on the game really well there. Kept the temperature of the game down to one which was necessary for a, a final on a big occasion like this. Dean Whitestone, the referee, his two assistants, Ian McGuinness and Max Underwood, and the fourth official, Josh Smith, all come forward there to take their medals. So it's Harris City Academy Crystal Palace who come forward now as runners-up in this year's competition. Of course, it's not the outcome that they wanted today. Of course, the overriding emotion at the moment will definitely be one of disappointment. But hopefully when they look back on this, they can still take positives from what's been a tremendous campaign this season. Joseph Penny there with his medal as well, which I certainly thought was one of the who I certainly thought was one of the standout performers today for Harris City in particular, and they had so many top quality players amongst their ranks, but ultimately in the end, well, so did Bishop Burton. It was a really well matched final, and I'm sure Harris City Academy will feel hard done by that they have to take silver from it, but there can only be one winner, and today's winner is Bishop Burton College. They'll step forward here, one by one, starting with the goalkeeper, who made that true, terrific save, flying to his right, to deny Odafua what at that stage would have been a goal to make it 2-1, in favour of Harris City, a brilliant save it was. And Bishop Burton have that moment to look back on and thank their goalkeeper for as well as the outfield players step forward one by one, each and every single one of them having played their part today, but not only today, across the course of the season as well, in the build-up to the big occasion. The skipper there, Mason Chaffer, and the player of the match, Max Doughty, with his medal to add to the player of the match trophy. And it will be Mason Chaffer to lift the trophy in just a minute or so's time. <laughs> Billy Fincham there coming forward to take his medal. Went about his business well today as well. And then the players who started on the substitutes bench, Luca Gag, Jacob Hill, Isaac Archer, and then Kai Nicholson and Keen Skelton as well. All of the medals here being handed out by the fake council member Dave Wollaston, as I said. They're very well-deserved medals for each and every one of the members here of the Bishop Burton squad. And well, waiting in anticipation then of the moment that they have been waiting for. Mason Chaffer with his hands on the trophy. And any second now, he will lift it high into the sky and celebrate. Because it's Bishop Burton College who are here crowned champions of the under 18 men's Super League competition. Congratulations 
to everyone involved at Bishop Burton. Very well deserved winners here today at Stoke City. Once again, commiserations to Harris City Academy. They'll travel back disappointed, of course. But it's a day for Bishop Burton to celebrate and one which I'm sure will live on long in their memories as well. Thank you very much for joining us today. Do hope you've enjoyed our coverage of both of the finals here played at Stoke City today. Ultimately, this one finishes in favour of Bishop Burton. Congratulations. And until next time, goodbye. Yeah, I'm joined pitch side here by Andy, the assistant coach of Bishop Burton College. Andy, national champions of England, so let me know how you're thinking, what you're, how are you feeling today? Yeah, it feels nice, feels really nice. Uh, we had a good last year, fell short in the final in the colleges one, so it's good to get to the schools one and uh, put, it, put it away and get the result. And you had quite a few teams enter the Super League before in the last couple of seasons. What makes this team so special to come here to Soak today and be crowned national champions? I just think it's the personalities in the group. Like we said, we had a, we had a crack at it last year. And there's a hunger this year to come back and do something special again. You know, we've won the league this year as well. It's great, I mean, it's great to do a double. And that, like I say, the personalities of the group are fantastic. And talk to you a little bit about the game today. Uh, it's quite a tight one. There's a tough opponent in Harris City yeah. Academy. Um, how do you think the boys played? You know, I've got to give credit to them. I thought they were really good. Uh, their rotation in midfield were killing us a little bit in the first half. I thought we started really well. Then second, like, saw the second half of the first half. They got on top a little bit. Um, we just had to lads at our time, just, like, relax a little bit, find your man, find a pass, get closer to people and we'll get results. And I said to Benno with about 20 seconds, I think they were done here. And then we, Dash has made an unbelievable save. Uh, it's ended up winning us the game because we've got up the other end of the squad. I was going to mention that save actually, because that was <laughs> an unbelievable save from the keeper to, uh, to keep you in it. Um, the man of the match today, number seven, Max, yeah. what did you make of his performance? Yeah, really good again. Max is really good when he's direct. And that's all we asked him today. Look, we don't usually play him on the right, but we usually play him on the left. But with him being on the right, just be, just be direct. 
take your fullback on every chance you get. And if you need to come off, we'll take you off because you ran, ran, your, ran your nuts off. So he's done really well. Yeah. And uh, National Champions of England, congratulations, mate. Uh, go and celebrate with your team. <laughs> Cheers, pal. Thank you, mate. Cheers, Cheers. boys. Thank you, mate.